Mike, can you we let Ed live. in? We are live. Yes, I will. Hey, good evening. Good evening, folks, and uh, welcome to the planning board meeting, kind of East Hampton planning board meeting of August 5th, 2020. Yep, that's and, fine. Uh, we have, I'm waiting for the last of us. Ed? To come on. Hello. Hello. Followed by Pound. You're there. Hi. And Ed, you're, I Ed are you with us yet? I am. Yes, hi, Ed. Hello. Hi. We have a full house now. So Ann may be the phone number that's trying to get in. Oh, oh that may be true. Yes, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. Well, I see Joanne Powell on our screen. Enter your participant ID followed by Pound. Otherwise, just that may be Joanne with the uh, telephone. Uh, the meeting password followed by Pound. Joanne, can you hear us? That audio is coming from her. You are oh. in the meeting now. There are more than 20 participants in the meeting. Boy. This meeting is being recorded. recorded. You I'm have been put Joanne on hold by the house. Yeah, why don't you mute Joanne until she's... Uh, okay, all right, very good. All right, folks, uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few matters on for uh, site plan review in our work session. Uh, we have a couple of matters on in our regular meeting for approvals of... Uh, some resolutions. Um, we did have a uh, preliminary, uh, a, I'm sorry, sub waiver review on the uh, Wayne Scott Commercial Center preliminary subdivision, uh, but that is uh, going to be uh, taken off the agenda. Um, I'll let um, Thomas just give us a, a two, two second rundown on why we're taking that off. Uh, yeah, the, the applicant. Uh, the applicant's representative asked for it to be adjourned to the next meeting. Um, he's got a scheduling conflict and he also needed to review uh, some documents with his clients. So um, anyway, that's that's it. I would just so that everyone's clear because you probably uh, the membership uh, should have received copies of the uh, proposed draft escrow agreement where, where the uh, Wayne Scott uh, Commercial Center EIS has a number of uh, um, matters in it that we think that the cleaning department, I should say, recommended that uh, <coughs> about, um, having experts uh, retained. Um, and uh, so Thomas uh, and the legal department prepared an escrow agreement so that they will pay for that. Uh, and that's what they're reviewing right now. So we would have been discussing that very, very briefly tonight. We're not going to discuss it at all because it's still a negotiation between the that yeah, somebody has somebody has some music or it sounds like all things considered on in the background <laughs> <laughs> joanne can you hear let's make sure we're not the audio that in que is in question is coming from joanne powell's microphone are you there joanne joanne jody can you get a message over to joanne that let her know what we're trying to do here i keep muting her and she's unmuting <laughs> yeah well, let, i will um, we also need a letter for Wayne Scott Commercial in the file where they're saying that they wanted to be off the agenda. We normally have a letter in the file for that. That's right. Oh, okay, I, I've got emails, so I'll, I'll forward them to you. All right, let's get that. that that'll suffice, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Jody. It's an important point to make sure we have right. All right, so uh, we'll start with Helmut Hanger. And uh, Marco, this is yours. Is the applicant, sorry, yeah. is the applicant there? This is Joel Halsey. Yeah, I know. Um, is Joel there? Joel Halsey, I believe, came in under caller ID on the phone. There are two callers on hold. I'll just see if one of them is him, just a moment. See if he's on. Let's get him on. Yeah. Yeah. What am I asking, Joanne? Let's see if she's, if she's connecting up with us and uh, that uh, she turned off her radio. Or you know, whatever is causing the interference. Let's make sure she's she can hear what's going on and participate. Hello, caller, you're live with Hello? the planning board. Yeah, Joel, is that Joel? Hello. Hello, Joel. Is that Joel Halsey? Is that you? Uh, I just got a message from Joanna. Says she has no sound. Um. 
Uh, I'll ask her to message Mike. Maybe you can help her, Mike. I'll try. Thank you, Mike. We have the uh, applicant's representative on the helm and hang map, which is, uh, ordinarily is Joel Halsey. Joel Halsey was just on the free conference caller, but the phone has hung up at this point. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And we're having one of those nights. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, let's... Um, okay. Well, let's um, let's let's, uh, let's go to... Let, we'll go, we'll, when Joel gets back on, uh, Mike, tell him to please wait. We'll be right with him um, as soon as we get to the next time. Chairman, time. there's no... Just to make sure you understand, there's no way I can communicate with a phone caller. The phone caller oh, okay. is a cue that I see and I unmute them when asked to bring in the next person. Mm -hmm. I, I can do that as soon as they call back. Uh, do you see anybody uh, one uh, queued up? On hold. I can unmute them now if you'd like to see who they are. Yeah, let's see who that is. Maybe Hello, Carly, you're alive with Hello. the planning board. Hello, is anyone Hello? there? Yes, uh, who's this, please? Hello? Hello, caller. caller. Can you Hello, please I'm state in the waiting name? room. Who are you? Can you identify yourself, please? All right. It's, uh, plainly, it's not Joel. So let, let's go on to the next one, which is 224, 228 Springs Fireplace Road. And uh, Fabia, this will be yours. Who's the applicant on this one? This is Trevor Darrell. Um, he's. He's on the Zoom call, so he's here. Yeah, I see, I see funny um, well, quickly, Mike, oh, yeah. are you're not on the chat list. I don't know how you can communicate to Joanne. I'm I'll trying to see if that. I can. I can do All right, that. great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Abby, why don't you um, uh, bring us up to date on 224, 228 uh, Springs Fireplace? Sure. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, so this is a wrap-up memo for... 224 and 228 Springs Fireplace Road, LLC. Uh, the application was made to create a storage yard for vehicles and equipment over two single and separate lots with an establishment of an access easement and landscaping. Uh, the parcels are in commercial industrial zoning district and within South Fork groundwater protection area and the Suffolk County Pine Barrens. So a uh, public hearing was held on June 10, 2020, and written comments were held open for public until July 24. One member of the public spoke at the hearing and he shared comment about two undersized lots being utilized as one commercial use without being merged. Uh, the town attorney and principal building inspector both have advised that the proposed lot doesn't require the merger of the two lots and they, they can remain single and separate. He also questioned the ownership of stockade, stockade fence and had concerns with drainage and pavement. The stockage fence is actually the existing condition of the property and will be replaced by a new one with the new project, which will not be visible from Springs Fireplace Road. Uh, let me share screen. So uh, a memo from a town engineer found dated June 2019, where he reviewed the drainage layout and calculations and pavement plan of the project and found them to be satisfactory. Seven individual letters were received from the public. Five members wrote in support of the proposed project. Two of the public shared concern on providing 50 feet wide uh, scenic easement along the right-of-way of Springs Fireplace Road, uh, as stated in the urban renewal map. However, uh, planning department notes that the scenic easement is excluded for the properties in the commercial industrial zone. So 50 feet, this 50 feet wide easement would not be applicable to these two parcels. Uh, also, there is a minor revision required on the site plan. Uh, the to total coverage for both properties should be corrected from 9,762 square feet to 15,074 uh, square feet before it gets approval. 
Uh, as a condition of approval, uh, the board should have a discussion on conditions for groundwater protection measures, as there is no specific regulation in the town code on storing materials in yards. Uh, so the board uh, need to come to a consensus uh, about specifying conditions uh, for groundwater safety. Uh, there have been discussion in previous meeting about including no maintenance and repairing of vehicles and no on-site service of vehicles as a condition for specific groundwater safety. Uh, also, the applicant submitted the declaration of covenants and restrictions, which found acceptable by town attorney to the planning board. So the conditions should be met meet be by the covenant and restrictions and draft uh, drainage and access easement before the approval. Thank you very much, Vivian. Uh, there's uh, Mr. Darrell, would you like to speak on the application? Yes, I, I haven't um, seen any further follow up with regard to the amendment of the site plan. I didn't get any follow up from the planning department on that. What was that number again? Sorry, for total coverage? Yeah. Oh, uh, so the total coverage on the site plan requires to show the uh, addition of two parcels as shown on the site plan. It should, be, it's shown as 9,762, but it should be 15,074 square feet. So you want the site plan to show both lots on the total coverage on one number? Okay. If the number is just wrong, it just to need to be corrected. Okay. It's yeah, very minor do. revision. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we with regard to the groundwater concern, I think we had addressed that through the initial um, discussions that we had had with the planning board through this process. That uh, the water runoff is to go to um, the systems that have the additional filtration uh, installed in them, which the uh, design by the engineer was supplied to the planning department and reviewed uh, throughout the process to address those concerns. And um, with regards to, uh, there's no running water on the property. Uh, it's a dry storage only. Thank you very much. Um, Sharon, uh, yeah, Sharon, this is yours. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I think that all are the small questions we had, you know, and then the things that were brought up at the public hearing have been addressed, um, you know, in terms of um, the easement and the merging of the two lots, I guess was the big one. Um, and since those things have been resolved, and I guess this, so they will not, I mean, if there's no running water, they can't be cleaning their vehicles, so there won't be any repairing mm -hmm. So we have to just make sure that we do put in the approval that um, they will not be, you know, changing the oil and all of those things on the premises. Um, and other than that, I mean, and correcting the map, obviously. So just the, the I, I would say this is um, done, and I would, you know, vote to approve it with the with the changes of the site plan. This the change number, the coverage number. Very well. Uh, does anybody have any further comments on uh, with respect to this application? Board? Nope. Uh, Sam, I'm one trying to remember what we did with under the bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, as far as, um, remember we talked about they were storing uh, there trailers. Uh, trailers. Restrictions. In other words, taking the same kind of restrictions that we had in uh, below the bridge as we do um uh under the bridge as we do with uh with this one is that what you're suggesting yeah okay. if it helps the board's discussion uh i can share screen right now and show you the exact four conditions of approval uh that you required with regard to that for below the bridge right. great idea eric thank you eric excellent <laughs> Well, one of the things that we, we talked about was uh, the kinds of things that can't be stored, no outdoor storage of hazardous materials, many of the lots, that kind of thing, um, because there aren't any buildings, again, as with below the bridge, there, you know, the groundwater protection policy really doesn't apply 
but we did want to restrict, you know, what could be stored on the property. And as Sharon said, um, you know, no repair of vehicles, no oil changes, that kind of thing. And I think we wanted to know what kind of a protocol they'd have in place for anything that spilled. Um, because one of the items on the below the bridge was uh, there shall be no outdoor storage of hazardous materials on any of the lots. Mm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, potential hazardous materials, including fuel, which seems like the most likely sort of thing that might spill because these are vehicles after all. A chlorine fertilizer and other such items associated with general contractors and other common industrial activities should be confined to within uh, with this uh, confined within properly stored sealed storage bins or on parked vehicles if covered and to within <clears throat> excuse me sorry my voice is bad the principal building on uh, the various lots so I think we should have we should tailor that language um, to this lot a little better um and i and i i first wanted to thank the applicant because i think these um, these uh people worked with us you know the applicant and their um council worked with us really really well and i think that nice uh buffer that's along the springs fireplace road and the uh, landscaping and um you know plantings mm -hmm. the reveg plan is really going to be great and i think this is all going really well but given that it's in special groundwater protection area i think we have to be very careful about the kinds of things that we allow to be on there no it's, i mean look i think you're right we can type we can tell the language specifically to this application but this gives us a really solid framework so mm -hmm. the planning department a solid framework i think so um Same. Quick, quick question for, uh, really for Thomas, I think. <clears throat> um, hazardous materials, the definition, um, you know, it's defined, maybe defined in the Suffolk Sanitary Code or it may be defined by the D. I'm just wondering if we need, I don't think we have a definition in the town code well, so I'm, just, I'm wondering if we if we should refer to or cook up a definition of hazardous material. It's defined in paragraph 3.11 of the below the bridge resolution. If you look at potential hazardous materials, including fuel, chlorine, fertilizer, and other such items. Um, so I, I, okay. I mean, I'm not sure if it, I'd have to look in the code, but if you look at that what's on the screen now, paragraph 3.11, it looks like it's defined there, so. Yeah, it's just, it's a kind of a term of art. I mean, uh, hazardous materials in, um, you in know. the county, all, yeah. Well, all the Superfund stuff re right. uh, refers to, and the county sanitary code. I <clears throat> I just think it'd probably be good for us going forward to either uh, reference the, you know, the, the county or the federal definition. Um, in That's a, a great this, idea. I mean, this is good, but hazardous materials is a very broad. Uh, maybe you know, you know, you, 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 maybe we, we can find some statutory definition and rely on that and rely on the language, see how much broader it is. But let's make sure that the applicant, uh, you know, um, understands that, that's, that, that the applicant is not going to be using anything that would characterize be characterized under, if it's a broader definition, that broader definition. So uh, in other words, work with the applicant on this particular language, but just coming up with it now. Whoa. Boy, we got gremlins tonight. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there was just a little right. feedback there, if I may. This is Mike from LCB. Oh, it was yours. Uh, Joanne Powell. No, Joanne Powell is on the meeting. Um, she was just on the telephone. That was some feedback with her Zoom microphone, apparently. But continue. I apologize. That's fine. So let's... Um, so, uh, so a question. So the Quackenbush is on... Um, 
you know, it's what they, they, they clean out cesspools, right? So there might be some detergents that they use. Mm -hmm. um, if you want. Uh, yeah, I, I think that what this is trying to preclude would be any storage of additional materials outside of, you know, so anything that they would be using would be inside of the vehicle and not stored open right. and on the right. surface okay. of the property. Right. Okay. Yeah, so and that's why it has to be specific. We have to know that, that they, they know that they can't store those particular things there. So, I mean, it's a good point, really. Oh. Oh, yeah, or if if they, you know, yeah, I mean, I think there are two categories here. It seems to me the hazardous materials, as Randy's brought up, needs a more specific definition, which I think we can find guidance from the county, <clears throat> excuse me, on the federal list. But in terms of whatever the, um, you know, Quackenbush's company uses, if there are things on, that their mm -hmm. um, company uses to store there, then I think they... That, that some sort of um, protocol for if there's a spill or how they're going to be contained, you know, needs to be. Um, and that's why it has to be specific. We have to know that, they're, that they, they know that they can't store those particular things there. So I mean, it's a good point, right? Oh, oh, yeah. If they, you know, yeah. I mean, Who's that speaking? I can't, I can't really tell. Who's that who's just speaking? I don't know. What is it? Like Ian. Wasn't me. No. All right. I, well, I think that what we're talking about is, you know, sure. the, the, you know, the Suffolk County Health Department and New York State DEC are going to list what are determined to be. So I think to Sam's point earlier, there's got to be some statutory language that right. is previously codified. So I don't think we as the applicant have objection to the town, whatever is deemed hazardous is, is hazardous. You know what I mean? Well, that's great. So we'll work yeah. that out and then we'll yeah. take a look at it. Okay, very good. All right, so uh, what do we need to do with this? Um, we're, we're, um, I think we, we're, we're just, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sean. I think we just moved to approve, right, or just to wrap it up to deem it complete, right? Yep, oh, I see. After with that the one site change on the map. Sam, no. after the site plan is submitted. I'm sorry, Jody, say that again. It's deemed complete after this site plan is submitted. Right. Deemed complete after they correct the number on the site yes. plan. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we still have another step to go. They well, have to... it's, it's already been deemed complete. We've had a hearing and everything. So really, they just need to correct the site plan. And then we've got to prepare the resolution yeah, for so what's we, been instructed. Well, we, right. So we can't right. approve right. it. We can't approve right. it right. until right. that right. correction is made. We don't have the resolution on tonight anyway, but it's uh, uh, it's you know a simple enough thing to fix, and uh, which I'm sure that will be done. And then the next time we'll have it on for uh, right for the resolution. Well, how, did, well, Sam, how, do we, how do we take up the issues that we were we were just discussing about clarifying language from statute where if it's statutory language or whatever it is that we want to use around hazardous materials? How does that happen? Well, I I, I would expect. I it's between the planning department and count and the applicant. Come and Thomas. I'll be in touch with Thomas to get language squared away right. that can incorporate if that's acceptable that'll, to the board. That'll be a condition of approval. Right. And yeah, we'll get it. We, I mean, I would appreciate a chance to see that before the meeting at which we'll ask to approve yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's that's my point. It gives actually. us a little, yeah, yeah. It's because well, we, we... Well, we'll have, it on, we'll have it. It'll be in the, in the packet, in the packet ahead of time. And if there's an issue, we can, uh, you know, everybody can read it and pass that along uh, to Thomas. And uh, Thomas can then uh, talk to Trevor about it and make sure that whatever issues we might have, with whatever they worked out, are ultimately worked out so that when we come back at the next meeting, we have language that is finally acceptable to everyone. I mean, what I'm trying to avoid here is us coming back and having, you know, a, another discussion when it could just as easily be resolved among council before that discussion with our input, of course. Uh, Same it doesn't much. sound to me like we're going to be too tempted <clears throat> from getting it done. And that's I've, the point. I've seen the uh, the uh, ASTM, I think it is, the uh, American Society of Something and Measures. Thomas probably knows that. I think they have a definition that's generally accepted. 
just as a thought there. Excuse me, okay. Chair, if I may. Well, well right now I'm more interested in chair. getting... Excuse me, Chair, if I'm I may sorry? interrupt. I just wanted to ask, there is a caller on the line if you wanted to open calls for this. Uh, the caller, is that is that a uh, caller about this application? I don't we're not know. We're not doing public uh, comment uh, on, on this. Fair he, he doesn't have, I was just he doesn't asking have any... to let you know yeah. there's a caller on the line if you wanted it's it. It's probably Joanne. I got a, mess <laughs> a <laughs> message that oh, Helen yeah, Harris sent. I got a message that came up on here that Helen Harrison's on the line. She's she's on the Zoom feed. I, I think we're okay. fine to keep going, Mike. I think we're good. I, okay. Maybe it's Joanne. It might be Joanne. She's been having trouble staying on, so maybe she's calling in. Can we can find out before? Uh, <laughs> no, there is the right only way I can ever to bring determine her right who now. a caller is is to bring them into the meeting. If you would like, All right, well, let's see who it is, and if it's any, if it's anybody but Joanne, we'll Fair uh, enough. put them back. Oh. Hello, caller. You're live with the planning board. Can you state your name? Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello, caller. I'm live with the planning board. Can you state your name? Please turn down the microphone. The nice, <laughs> but you know. I don't, if they're not able to speak directly so we can hear, I don't want to waste a lot of time with that. Okay. Let them come back, let them fix their own phone issues, turn off the radio, whatever they have to do, um, turn off the TV, whatever they have to do. All right. So, um, all right, so we'll, the next time we're on, on this, uh, presumably we will have all looked at the language that will presumably have been worked out between council and uh, town attorney and get your comments in ahead of time and then we can get the resolution up and get this application uh, done at the next meeting or <clears throat> okay. okay all right i understand that uh, thank you very much uh, applicant. thanks travel thank travel thank you yeah? okay. okay appreciate it sharon thank you very much we have um uh, i understand that uh joel halsey was on the line is on the line is he there? Joel? Unless that was Joel who was just calling in. <laughs> I don't have any other callers other than that and, one call. And did we have, I thought, Thomas, I thought we had Joel. He I thought he was, but I, I guess not. He's not on hold yeah. anymore. Um, I, I know <laughs> Helen Harrison is here for Brooks Park. So. All right, well, let's let's move on to Brooks Park then. Um, and well, you know, look, every time we'll, we we finish a matter, we'll go back and see if Joel, maybe Joel's watching on TV, and he can click in and wait for us, and we'll, we'll just keep coming back after each application. <clears throat> uh, Marco, Brooks Park College, it's yours. Uh, hello, good evening, yeah. members of the board. All right, so Brooks Park. <laughs> Cottage relocation. Application has been made to situate a 10 foot by 12 foot, 112, sorry, 120 square foot cottage building at the site of the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center. The cottage building itself is part of a locally designed historic landmark site and is currently located at 128 Nick Path. The site consists of 1.57 acres located on the southeast side of Fireplace Road in an A5 residence slash harbor protection overlay slash Springs Historic District Zoning Historic District Zoning District. It is partially cleared of naturally occurring vegetation. The tidal marshlands of Akabonic Harbor are situated roughly 200 feet from the proposed location of the cottage. A site plan slash special permit was granted to the site on February 13, 1991 for the conversion of a single-family residence to a semi-public facility, namely the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center. The Pollock Krasner House and Studio were occupied by the painters Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner from 1945 until 1984, and the site is designated a, natural, a National Historic Landmark. A subsequent site plan approval was granted to convert a garage into an office and restroom along with a 96-foot square foot addition. 
A public hearing was held electronically by video and teleconferencing, televised on local TV, LTV, Channel 22, and was made available for live stream on the LTV website, ltveh.org, June 17, 2020. The public was not permitted to appear in person, but could comment by telephone by calling 978-990-5000 and entering access code 589339. A transcript of the hearing was posted to the town's website after the hearing, and the hearing was to remain open until July 29, 2020, for the purpose of receiving written comments. No members of the public spoke at the hearing, and no written letters have been submitted to the file to date. Comments from the fire marshal, dated February 10, 2020, have found the submitted information sufficient and no further review necessary. In conclusion, provided the board agrees, the application is ready for approval. Very good, thank you. Um, the applicant is on the uh, on the Zoom call or on the phone? Yes. On the Zoom call, yes. All right, the applicant, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Helen. Okay, for Ms. Harrison, if you're available, the floor is yours. Yes, I am. Okay, if you have anything you'd like to add. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, uh, no, uh, I think we've submitted everything that's required. Very good, thank you. Um, in that case, Kathy, this is yours. Yep, I think we're good to go here. Um, pending the uh, approval from the IRB, I'd like to uh, recommend that we approve this application and move it forward. Okay. Does anyone else have anything they wish to add on this application? No. Nope. Hearing nothing? Here you go. Okay, good to go. All right. We'll have a resolution at our next meeting, I hope, and uh, we can uh, move this right along. Thank you very Thank much. Th Thank you, Helen. Helen. Thank you, Helen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right. One, one more time. Is uh, Joel Holsey on the line? Joel? Mm -hmm. uh, strike I two. I did not see Joel on the Zoom link. And the, again, the previous caller uh, chair is still available if you'd like me to try that again. Yeah, let's see who that is. If it's but if we get a lot of that feedback, you know, I'll immediately mute that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Hello, caller. Uh, Are you I there? Think we're good to go here. Um, sending the. Uh, uh, I'm muting that. What you're hearing is the audio of our meeting being recycled yeah. through some feedback. Yes, it uh, sounded familiar. So. <laughs> like an echo. Yeah, I know. Seven seconds away. Yeah, if I may, in the if I may, through caller ID in the past when Joel has called in and then gone away, I can see his name come up. If it happens, I can immediately interrupt you if you'd wish, and just to let you know to get him on. Yeah, grab him by the elbow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, tell, him, tell him to wait there. In the meantime, we will move on to uh, Twin Forks Mini Storage Modification. Uh, Eric, you there? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Lori Wiltshire? On the uh, phone, I don't see her there. Lori, there are no callers available on the phone other than the past one, which isn't currently working. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe yeah. I'm still uh, still uh, sharing screen here, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I believe I'm still sharing screen, so I'm going to switch over to the uh, Twin Forks uh, site plan. Uh, so you recently uh, had a I'm uh, sorry. Uh, is Lori, if we don't have the applicant on the line. Yeah, that's my yeah. question. I mean, I haven't heard from her today. I sent her the Zoom link. Um, so I would say. She did call in earlier. Yeah. And said she would be on with the phone number. Okay. Okay. Well, well maybe she's our mystery caller. I can try that one more time, Chair, if you'd like. Go right ahead. And we'll ask her if it's Lori. I can ask her phone. Yeah, I don't know. Excuse me, caller. Can you hear? In the past, when Joel has called in and then gone away, I can see his name come up. No. If it happens, I can. Boy, that was more than seven seconds ago. <laughs> okay. I mean, I would say let's, I guess, move on to the Southampton Hospital and we'll try to. His last two. Yeah. I mean, you know. I, I mean, yeah. could, could, could I just say one thing about the um, Hellman hangar? I mean, if we don't need anything, 
Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way about that one. You know, can so, we just approve it? I mean, I think I think it's a wrap up memo. I feel like jo if Joel has something to add, I think yeah. he just like it. Due diligence is calling in, but because I, I think they're eager to. I agree you know, with you, Kathy. Get yeah, that I, thing I, I done. Agree with you. I agree. That's a very, very good point. And I don't want to step on Marco's toes here, too, because it's his application. But um, he was telling me that uh, Joel called him um, this afternoon uh, with concern. Well, first of all, he said that they because there were three conditions, I believe. Marco, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, and right. He said that they they were they were recent. They were going to soon receive or they have received FAA approval. Oh, great. Yeah, they believe they. um will be receiving FAA approval. They're just waiting for the contractor uh, to confirm. But he I mean, I would, he I would say- I would say- about the groundwater protection though, right? Uh, yes, another condition of the approval was demonstration of compliance with the planning board's groundwater protection policy. Yeah, I would and, say uh, let's, let's get through the applications that we know we have people here for, and then right. we can have this discussion, you know, right. yeah, in an hour. Like, and, 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 and listen, this Southampton Hospital is going to take a few minutes, I, I suspect. So during that time, uh, Joel may get on the line and Lori may get on the line and, you know, they'll just uh, sit and wait for us to finish Southampton and then we'll get to them. So I didn't that, realize, yeah, I didn't realize Joel has concerns about the conditions. He does, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. If he does, then, we'll, then we have to wait for him. But in the meantime... Let's let's get um, going with uh, Southampton Hospital, and again, Eric, it's yours. Yep. And we do have uh, I saw uh, Ms. Vale and a couple of other folks on the line. For that okay. I apologize now for that. I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> Little Hank Williams. I was gonna say there's some slight. I right, was I see Ms. Vale there. So uh, Ed. Take board members. Eric, I just I, I, uh, sure. Eric, sorry, wrong, wrong. Uh, application is made to remove two baseball fields and accessory structures and replace them with a new freestanding emergency department and outpast, outpatient diagnostic and imaging center. The hospital emergency department is proposed to be approximately 23,830 square feet with an accessory ambulance garage of approximately, approximately 810 square feet a 55 foot by 55 foot helipad, generator enclosure of roughly 450 square feet. And um, there will be a new uh, traffic connection between Panago Place and Town Hall, as well as additional parking, landscaping, lighting, and utilities. Uh, the um, subject parcel is situated off Panago Road in East Hampton. It's 100% cleared of naturally occurring vegetation and zone PC uh, with an affordable housing overlay uh, on it. Uh, it is not within any special uh, designated groundwater protection area. And as I mentioned, it's currently approved with two baseball fields. Uh, pursuant to secret in chapter 128 of the town code, this is a type one action. The town board has declared lead agency status. Uh, the site plan special permit applications ultimate ability to be approved is contingent upon the town board granting a zone change request. Um, the project is currently proposed would require a use variance since it's zone PC. Uh, the applicants in the planning department discussed the possibility of zone change with the town board in August of 2019. At that time, it seemed that the majority of the board was amenable to granting that zone change. Um, the town board has also agreed to lease the property to Stony Brook Southampton Hospital and the planning board. Uh, you guys did send favorable comments to the town board regarding the zone change in October of 2019. Uh, the applicants are currently requesting the zoning designation to be changed to CI. Uh, the property was previously zoned CI from the adoption of zoning in 57 to sometime between 1986 and 1990. That had to do with the subdivision on the property uh, where the, that property was going to be residential uh, and it was rezoned to a residence. Uh, the property was improved with two baseball fields and then subsequently in the 2005 comprehensive plan it was recommended that it be rezoned to PC because of the baseball fields. Uh, two of the neighboring properties, 300 Panago Place with offices and 200 Panago Place with the East Hampton Healthcare Center are currently zoned CI. Uh, the planning department does not have any objection to the requested rezoning. Um, we do note that it, the intention is fully to replace the ball fields and relocate them elsewhere in town. We would also say that a condition of the rezoning should be um, providing at least four and a half acres of affordable housing overlay district designation 
uh, in other areas of the town to compensate for the loss uh, on this property. So the applicants have submitted a very thorough um, uh, project description, um, but you at this, in, this is the initial review, obviously, and the board should discuss um, what you uh, may also want to know about the proposed operation, including um, the various fluctuations of staff size, um, number of maximum number of employees at one time, number of ambulance trips, helicopter trips, uh, anything else you think that you may need. Uh, so there's no specific parking requirement for this use. Um, they've gone by medical arts, ambulatory care or clinic, uh, which requires one per 40 square feet of waiting area plus one per employee. Uh, this does appear to be the closest definition in the town code and would require 61 spaces. Uh, the plan provides 72, 57 of those are for visitors, 15 are employee parking spaces. Uh, there are two truck loading spaces for ambulance spaces at the rear of the main building and a garage to store another ambulance. And there are uh, four electric car charging stations throughout the parking lot. So um, the board uh, may want to discuss, um, well, should look at the submitted floor plan, which I have up now. Um, and it seems that most of the rooms appear to be for diagnostic services, such as x-rays, MRIs, and ultrasound. Uh, there does not appear to be a large number of rooms for treatment or exams of individual pa uh, patients. There appear to be about eight. Uh, therefore, the actual required amount of parking may be less than what has been provided. Uh, the board should review the design and quantity of parking and determine if it is adequate. Uh, we do not object to the proposed configuration, um, but uh, the, the applicant should um, speak with the Office of Fire Prevention, who will be, uh, have been referred this application, um, just to make sure that there's adequate room for fire trucks um, or larger emergency services vehicles uh, to turn around. Um, there may also be issues with access to the town hall property for the helipad, uh, but I'll get to that shortly. Uh, also, the fire marshal will review this for ADA accessibility, which um, this being a um, uh, emergency care facility, I, I would assume it, uh, it's going to meet that, but uh, they will double check that. Uh, so included in the project is a roughly 3,000 square foot concrete helipad to be utilized for medevac operations. It's proposed at the western end of the town hall property, not the subject parcel. Uh, access would be through a roughly 400 foot lane connecting the two sites and a security guard would separate the two prop uh, security gate would separate the two properties. The board may wish to discuss with the applicants how the gate would operate. Um, So this is showing you the glide path to the helipad uh, with the site being basically in the center here. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Uh, and then you can see the red here is the, the glide path to the helipad, which would be back behind uh, Town Hall. Um, oh. So there, there would be a connecting road um, through the town, the back of the Town Hall site. Um, there's a lot of traffic there, particularly from the police and sign and control methods to control traffic should be um, addressed. Uh, additionally, you need smooth and level grade for um, trauma uh, patients and ambulances. That, that should be addressed eventually. And um, we do note that that area is accessible to the public. There's nothing that stops the public from driving through there. So the, uh, the potential for the public conflicting with um, emergency services should be considered. Uh, there are no numerous tall obstructions within the immediate area. This includes a 125 foot tall water tower, 150 foot tall cell, uh, cell tower, trees, buildings, roughly 60 foot tall power lines. Um, the applicants, as you can see, have a, a submitted plans illustrating a flight path. Um, they do note that trees on the Western property line uh, would need to be removed. Those are not on town property. Um, so that is something that's gonna have to be addressed, but ultimately this is something that falls under the purview of the FAA and they'll need to meet their requirements. Okay. Uh, the applicants are proposing a new uh, FujiClean um, low nitrogen system. Uh, the cal uh, sanitary calculations appear to meet uh, health department um, requirements. And as you can see, it's situated to the rear of the building um, near the, uh, the railroad tracks. Um, we've also submitted a comprehensive uh, drainage control Drainage control plan and it includes dry wells in the parking lot as well as behind the building. Uh, we had recommended that the town's consulting engineer 
review the plans. Um, there may be an issue with that. I'll address that afterwards. Um, noise, uh, you normally request noise from uh, generators. They are proposing a diesel generator uh, behind the garage in the northwestern corner of the property. Um, you can see it on this plan, although I would like to go back to page six, which is the overall site plan. And you can see it uh, there in the northwestern corner generator. Um, so we have not gotten any noise information uh, for that uh, or for the helipad. Um, although there is a question and it's something that I think will come up um, down the road. Uh, there is a, an exemption or exception in the, the noise chapter that says um, activities for uh, fire departments and emergency care ambulatory um, services. Uh, they're exempted from noise requirements. I think that's intended to be about sirens, but um, that's a discussion we can have. Um, so um, the subject parcel along with 100 Panago Place, 200 Panago Place, and 300 Panago Place were part of the Pospisil Associates subdivision uh, from 1988. Uh, Archaeology was done uh, at that time. Um, and um, they said no artifacts were found. Um, however, it is, it is felt that more test uh, pits are called for in uh, for um, are called for to give greater assurance that no portion of the Pantago site extends into the Pospisil subdivision. The Pantago site refers to a site that's um, roughly 400 feet to the east of here by the water tower, um, to the east of the water tower, uh, which was the subject of an archeological excavation in, starting in 1917. Uh, they found 39 burial sites and numerous items, including jewelry and pottery. Uh, the site is believed to be a Montaukett burial site that was formed in the 1660s uh, as a result of a smallpox epi epidemic. Um, all the, the um, remains were exhumed. Uh, this area is now a residential neighborhood. Um, the Pospisil archeological study said, it appears unlikely that the burial ground extends across the 400 feet from its known location to the proposed Pospisil subdivision. Uh, the field survey, which included a small number of shovel tests disclosed no indication of historic or prehistoric cultural activities. Nevertheless, in the view of sensitivity surrounding the possible disturbance of cemeteries, it is recommended that the preliminary exploration be supplemented by further field tests. As a further precaution, it's recommended that the planning department um, be present um, when the initial construction uh, phase uh, begins. Uh, it's noted that, although we will note that uh, no further field surveys were conducted for the East Hampton uh, Medical Arts Building at 200 Panago Place, nor for the uh, offices at 300 Panago Place, uh, nor were they conducted when the, um, the Little League field was built on the subject property. Additionally, we contacted and have had a response from New York State Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation, and they have submitted a letter saying, uh, quote, no historic properties, including archeological and or historic resources will be affected by this undertaking. Uh, regardless of that, just given the sensitive nature of the fact that there could be burial sites um, due to the proximity of the um, Panago excavation site, we would strongly recommend that you require um, additional archeological um, information be submitted by the applicants. It's my understanding that they're already working on this. Um, there may be an issue, although I'll let the applicant speak to this, of you know, the potential danger of doing excavation of test pits when it's not cordoned off and you know, it could be you know, um, people, children um, playing, little, playing baseball could be tripping on those, but we'll, we'll address that later. Um, so uh, I just want to go back to the site plan here. Uh, um, so traffic. Um, they submitted a very thorough uh, traffic study prepared by Dunn uh, Engineering. Uh, it was prepared in December of 2016. We note that uh, the study assumes a facility of 32,000 plus square feet, whereas the current proposal is for a building of roughly 24,000 square feet. It's 26% uh, um, smaller in size. Uh, they used the uh, trip generation estimates that are a, a factory um, or industry standard um, using hospital, clinic, and then medical, dental, or office building. A medical, dental, office building uh, was chosen as the closest use definition. And we note that that definition um, of those three is the one that generates the largest uh, volume of traffic. Uh, so they used the average annual, annual, uh, the annual average daily traffic counts from the New York DOT. Um, to determine the impact of the additional traffic from this site on the ex ex existing traffic volumes and then express the impact in terms of level of service, which is a grade between A and F. Um, 
A being the shortest time delay that it takes to make turning movements. Um, based upon table C, the level of service uh, at various turning movements between Panago Place and Montauk Highway would be reduced um, should the project be construct, uh, constructed. And that automatically makes them a type one action under our type one actions of chapter 128 of the town code. Um, however, the, um, uh, the traffic study also provides estimates for delays if there's a traffic light included uh, at Panago Place and Montauk Highway. Under this scenario, um, delays still increase through the added traffic, but they're, they're mitigated beyond uh, if there is no traffic control and the traffic study specifically recommended that a traffic light be installed. Um, just some uh, corrections to the traffic study. Uh, they're minor and probably you're not gonna have a major impact. Um, they're using uh, aver annual average daily traffic counts from 2015 New York State DOT data. I don't think that there's anything newer. I looked on the website, um, but the trip generation is based again on that 32,000 square foot facility, not the under 24,000 square foot facility. Um, so they're basically overestimating under that calculation the number of generated trips. Um, and then additionally, when they do formulate that, and again, this was in 2016, um, what they do is they'll take the most recent count, you know, 2000, it was 2015, 2016, it was prepared. And then they'll look into the future um, under a no build scenario and a build scenario, uh, the standard is looking two years. So what they did in this study is to go to 2018. Um, what we would like to see is that information corrected, the correct size of the facility um, be accounted for, uh, and then also um, estimates of the additional traffic based on the average annual increases in traffic volume um, be projected to 2022. Um, those, that just affects basically um, the numbers of the level of service impact. Uh, it would require updating uh, two tables in the appendix of the traffic study, table C and table E. Um, I believe that Dunn Engineering can do that, and I believe that's important to better reflect the actual uh, traffic volume that would be generated. Um, so, buffer next. You're up to the buffer. Yes, I know. I'm I'm just uh, readjusting the uh, the screen here. So I'll do some. Okay. Um, the subject parcel represents lot three of the Pospisil Associates subdivision. As part of the approval, it was required that a declaration be filed which prevents residential development within 50, uh, 50 feet of the northern property line on the subject parcel uh, and clearing of natural vegetation. Now, again, that refers to um, no uh, residential development and no additional clearing. It would appear that the purpose of the 50 foot buffer was to screen development, residential development, uh, from train traffic and as well as to screen any development from train riders that were passing by. Um, it's, we note that most of this 50 foot, uh, 50, 50 foot wide buffer is currently cleared. There's only a narrow strip along the edge. The fences of the playing fields basically go right up to the edge of the property line. Um, and then also the drainage control structures and the sanitary system are currently proposed within this 50 foot setback. Um, they, are, um, they are structures. Um, so uh, the board should discuss the uh, declaration uh, with council. It does provide for amendment with a majority plus one vote of the planning board. It does seem to me that that was established um, because at the time this lot, uh, as a result of the settlement, was not going to be commercial industrial. It was going to be developed residentially in order to mitigate traffic. Um, and that was, um, it was then rezoned and this condition was put on there to, to buffer residential development. Um, but again, uh, that's something maybe you want to discuss with council, uh, whether or not that, um, that declaration precludes uh, the currently proposed design. Uh, additionally, in this area, uh, the town has proposed to create a bike path running parallel to the railroad right of way as part of the South Fork bikeway. Uh, the site plan presently illustrates a potential bike path running through the center of the 50 foot buffer area and in one area uh, partially over the Fuji sanitary system which has six caps that must remain exposed above ground. Um, and you can see in this area, you see this zigzagging trail um, through, uh, and this is actually the landscaping plan um, that would be reserved for the bicycle path. Um, so- uh, Eric, what is that dotted line that's just sort of north, it runs through it and then north of it on the, step, on the east back. side? That's a, a setback. Yeah, okay. It's a 25 foot setback line, which okay. is the actual um, required setback. Um, 
Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Um, the proposed location of the septic system uh, currently leaves approximately 25 feet to the northern property line for an unobstru un unobstructed for the bike path. Uh, the applicant should advise that the current sanitary configuration and location has been reviewed by the uh, County Department of Health Services. This is in order to ensure that uh, it can be situated in that design or if it's going to have to be spread out more, uh, precluding the bike path from being included. Uh, it is recommended uh, that is that is that if it is determined that the 50 foot buffer area in the declaration is not applicable, that a 20 uh, foot wide area along the northern property line be required to be unobstructed by other structures to ensure the ability to create the bike path. Um, and uh, we need to know if uh, we need to redesign the, um, the sanitary system in order to uh, accommodate that. Uh, having flexibility in locating the bike path within the 50 foot wide buffer area where it does not conflict with other structures may be beneficial in its design and construction. A future bike path connection to the facility for employees uh, and others utilizing the diagnostic laboratories in the facility could be a beneficial asset. Uh, so this is the overall site landscaping plan. Um, just down a little here. Uh, uh, the plan does not have any invasive species being utilized, um, which is uh, what we require. Uh, although this, the site is considered completely cleared under the town code definition, um, as the native trees and understory were removed in the past, uh, the site is uh, rimmed with vegetation that provides screening between other commercial properties, uh, some with expansive parking areas. The existing trees in these areas have been located on the plan and appear to be proposed to be preserved. Uh, there are presently a number of invasive vines and shrubs under the canopy of these trees, including capbriar, Asian bittersweet, and Russian olive. While invasive species, uh, while invasive species, these plants are uh, contained by surrounding development and provide screening between other sites, including a large building and outdoor storage area utilized by the town recreation department on the westerly side, and two relatively large parking areas associated with the office buildings on Panago Place on the southerly side. Uh, the present screening preserves a more rural appearance by separating the rather extensive areas of development. The applicant should clarify whether this understory is proposed to be removed. If so, it is recommended that the remaining canopy on the southerly and easterly sides be supplemented with shrubs uh, to re replace this screen. Uh, the erosion and control plan depicts a silt fence along the edge of the existing vegetation located on the northern, southerly, and westerly sides. It should be required to be installed prior to the uh, commencing of uh, clearing, grading, or construction in order to preserve the existing vegetation that is to remain. Uh, there's also a line of landscaping in the form of a large, gro of a large growing trees proposed to be planted the southerly edge of the 15, uh, 50 foot wide buffer area that would appear to interfere with the drainage systems. And again, that's up on the northern area here. Um, you know, I guess if I um, just show you real quick. Um, so again, that's, that's this area along the northern property line. You can see there's a bunch of mature trees that they're propo proposing to plant um, to add here. But if I um, scroll up, uh, if I can scroll up, Real quick for you, um, you can see uh, the drainage structures are proposed in that area. Right. Um, and you really can't have um, tree roots growing into leaching pools. And then also the, um, the sanitary um, is proposed in that area too, where they're, where they're proposing trees on that landscaping plan. So um, that will have to be addressed uh, ultimately. Um, so... <coughs> Uh, comprehensive site lighting plan has been submitted. Uh, it appears that it meets most of the board's guidelines. Uh, however, we don't have the information for the lumen levels of the fixtures, uh, the mounting height of all the fixtures, uh, the manufacturer's uh, spec sheets for the fixtures, which can be printed offline, uh, should be provided. And then um, also we note that uh, the building code uh, requires lighting at all building en entrances. And it appears based on the plan that uh, no lighting at the, the building entrances has been proposed. Um, only post lights and um, some various other lights um, throughout the parking lot and the site. Um, so that is going to be required to meet the uh, state building code. Um, so in conclusion, the application is incomplete, uh, pending the resolution of those issues and the submission of the required items. The board should also discuss whether or not to send additional formal written comments to the town board, particularly in regard to the site plan elements, as the planning board has already written to the town board in support of the zone change. Uh, the town board will be holding a public hearing soon for the requested zone change. 
And I'm, I'm going to scroll down uh, to the elevation plans at the very end here, um, just to show you what the building looks like. And then I will um, go back to the site plan. Um, but that basically concludes my memo. Um, so there you go. Great job, Eric. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Very comprehensive. Uh, Ms. Job. Dale, would you like to uh, yes. uh, take over? <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, board members. Liz Vale, Farrell Fritz, 50 Station Road, Watermill, representing Southampton Hospital for the proposed emergency room department at 400 Pantago Place. I'm here tonight with our architect, David Larson of Perkins Eastman, and our engineer, Robert De Bruin of De Bruin Engineering. Uh, the proposed application is currently before the town board for a zone change from parks and conservation to commercial industrial and the town board assumed lead agency for seeker purposes at its last meeting of July 21st. To that end, we've submitted a full site plan for this board's review. And I just wanna emphasize the nature of this application, which is intended to address the health, safety and welfare of the people of the town of East Hampton by providing emergent medical care in a closer location than Southampton Hospital. In 2016, the town of East Hampton identified 400 Pantago Place as a preferred location for this proposed emergency room by resolution. And then in 2018, the town of East Hampton leased the subject property to the hospital for the proposed emergency room use. As this board may be aware, the existing hospital in Southampton Village is moving to the former SUNY Stony Brook Southampton College campus which is approximately five miles further west. The proposed ER will become even more important to the town of East Hampton residents after the hospital moves. The emergency room will be run by Stony Brook Southampton Hospital, and the intent is, again, to provide emergency medical care and save lives in your community. In one of the resolutions adopted by the town board, it states, quote, the town of East Hampton has long advocated for increased medical treatment facilities in the town of East Hampton due to the extensive travel times to reach Southampton Village and other medical care facilities further west on the South Fork. The proposed, special, um, the proposed site plan special permit application will be for a semi-public facility in the central, on the, in the commercial industrial zoning district. And the proposed structure meets all of the zoning requirements for the ZI, CI zoning district and will not require any variances in connection with the project. Um, I just want to address some of the issues that he raised, that Eric raised with respect to um, his report. The first thing I would touch on is the helipad. Um, the helipad is proposed off-site. It is, is not really going to be before this board for site plan approval. It's an off-site improvement. There's no agreement with the town at this point in time or the town board to lease us that area for a helipad. We were simply showing a helipad in a convenient location because we anticipate that the Suffolk County um, Medevac, the Suffolk County Police Department Medevac, will need to somehow land close to or in proximate location to this site for emergency uh, services. Um, that is the only use that the helipad would be put to. Would it be exclusively used by the Suffolk County Police Medevac for emergencies? Um, and again, it's offsite. So we're not asking you to consider an approval in connection with the helipad at all. Um, it's just shown on our plan because that was our ideal spot for it at the time we drafted these plans. It's subject to negotiations with the town board. Um, and that's with respect to the helipad. So that's not really going to be before this board. Uh, for the archeological issues Eric raised, we did hire um, an archeological firm to address these issues with a phase 1A and phase 1B environmental uh, archeological study, which they will be conducting. Um, as Eric said, we have to coordinate with the town to make sure the park is closed when we're digging these holes. Uh, to ensure no one gets hurt, which we will do. We'll be happy to coordinate. And we're also coordinating with the New York State um, Parks Department, Preservation, Historic Preservation and Parks Department on that matter as well. The traffic study is from 2016. It was actually a traffic study looking at different proposed sites for the emergency room department. And we are absolutely going to update that traffic study to address this site with the reduced square footage of the building. Um, as far as the declaration, I'm happy to work with council to review that. All of these structures that are proposed in that buffer area noted by the declaration are proposed underground and we don't believe they interfere with the declaration's intent whatsoever. Um, the remaining lighting issues we'll be uh, addressing as well. We'll certainly get you those lumen uh, count, count uh, numbers and information that we have to supplement the lighting uh, for the board's consideration. 
Uh, with that, I'm happy to turn it over to David Larson to go through our site plan and renderings for the board. If you need additional information, um, again, we're here to answer any questions for you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Mr. Larson, please. Yeah, Eric, can I share now? Can you stop sharing and let me share? Good evening, members of the board. Happy to be here. It's been a long time coming. We've been working on this project for quite a while, and it's uh, it's nice to get to this point. So, you, you should be able to share now, uh, David. Sorry, not David. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Give me one second. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so we pulled together sort of an executive summary version. Eric did such a great job going through the. Uh, the overall site plan application. So this is a sheet, this is just the cover sheet and it gives you some context for the overall uh, project, uh, the site plan in small scale, uh, a more contextual plan here, and then a, a black and white rendering of <clears throat> from the southeast corner of the building as you drive up to drop off patients. Excuse me, I'm not seeing the page that you're sharing or is it just me or? Can anybody see it? Yeah. I can see it. You can see it. Yes. Okay. 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 That's me. Bring okay. Down the, Lou, bring down the frame where we're all, uh, where you, we can see each other and it's there behind. It. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Okay. So I wasn't sure how much you had seen of this uh, in the past. Uh, this is just a contextual plan that's a little zoomed in showing the surrounding properties that were already mentioned by Eric and the access from Pantigo Place. Uh, noteworthy here is this roundabout, which is uh, very narrow and small, and it's, it's difficult to negotiate with an ambulance. So we, we really felt like that would be something that we would like to change in the plan. Um, LIRR to the north, <clears throat> the water tower to the east, we tried to do the helipad on the site, and that's what you saw previously. However, after numerous studies, and we have a helipad consultant involved, there was just no way to do it with all the obstructions and trees and, and water tower there, because you need a one to eight slope to take off. So that's where that spawned from is, well, the nearest, and you don't want to go very far for a helistop. Um, the nearest open land, was the place where we showed it. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the future, but that's really not part of the zoning as Liz mentioned. <clears throat> Survey of the existing property showing the ball fields. Um, as Eric said, they go most of the way out to the edge of the property, but these little curly Q lines around the edge show a lot of the existing planting. Our intent is to keep all significant trees that we can. And I think we lost a total of maybe six uh, but we put in well over 100 uh, in the landscaping plan. <clears throat> this also shows you that roundabout in a little more detail, and all these converging traffic patterns would be a little confusing uh, in an emergency. So <clears throat> we do think that straightening that out and creating a more gentle curve into the ring road around the property will be helpful. So here's the site plan. This has all the zoning information on the right and the table on the right. Um, <clears throat> this shows the revised roadway configuration coming in. <clears throat> Basically, people dropping off will come in and ambulances. This is a 24-foot road, so it'll handle dual streams. <clears throat> um, people coming in will circulate up around to the right, turn, drop off at a covered entry and then circulate back to the parking here. Ambulances will have a controlled access point and, and service vehicles, I should say, because <clears throat> we don't want patients to go the wrong way. Um, <clears throat> they will be given controls of some sort. Um, I think they will have uh, a clicker of some sort that um, their security people at Southampton have mentioned. <clears throat> um, so there, there'll be multiple um, ambulance services serving this facility. Southampton Hospital or Stony Brook will keep one ambulance on site. These other parking bays are for <clears throat> other ambulance services that will come and drop off patients. And they'll stay there and do paperwork, but they won't be housed there. They won't live there. 
Um, also at the back, we have two loading berths, which is required by the zoning ordinance. <clears throat> We're still working on some of the um, trash aspects. Uh, we have to get with the municipal waste hauling company and figure out how they wanna deal with um, frequency of, of pickup and that type of thing. As you continue around the site, the generator, which is situated right along the 50 foot uh, setback line, and then the ambulance garage over here. All the employee parking is situated separate from the, uh, the patient visitor parking. <clears throat> and we anticipate a maximum staff of 14 to 15 uh, providers at this point. Um, for ambulances, Taking someone to the Medivac, we are proposing a roadway going over here, which will also have controlled access. Uh, we don't want anybody from this site going out through the municipal property unless there's an emergency where they need to take someone over there. <clears throat> so at this point, you know, we, this is proposed and this is contingent on that approval for that, uh, that other parcel. Um, as far as the parking count goes, um, you stated that you think that's an appropriate uh, method, which really is the only one because there are no overnight stays in this facility. It's an emergency department, which is really patient type of setting, uh, maximum 23 hour stays. So the medical arts category was appropriate. Um, <clears throat> now, given that the exact number of visitors, <clears throat> excuse me, per day is uncertain we wanted a little buffer in that parking count also for surge capacity uh, if ever you know there's another pandemic or other types of surges for any reason natural disasters uh, you want to have a little buffer in that parking count not to mention if someone comes in on an ambulance they may have family members come or if even a walk-in patient may drive in and have a family member come who's a caregiver <clears throat> so that's really kind of what drove that parking count um, we, you know, we're well within the, the requirements for lot coverage for the building and for uh, overall site coverage for paving. We've done everything we can to try to reduce that paving. Uh, we had more paving in the original schemes, <clears throat> but, um, you know, we put our, our pencils down and we figured out how to really uh, make it as, as compact as possible on the site. It is, a, it is a challenging site because of the L shape. And um, <clears throat> we played with multiple configurations, rotating the building. This is the ideal configuration for solar gain. Um, <clears throat> we, we're using um, daylighting and um, solar panels on the roof to uh, improve the property and meet some of your uh, sustainability goals. <clears throat> Landscaping. Uh, the color view is a little more compelling, um, but you can see the trees down along the bottom and the edge are the ones that we're preserving. Typically anything over six inch caliper is what you preserve. And then we're putting a uh, pretty significant amount of landscaping back to buffer everything. Um, <clears throat> with regard, oh, actually in this corner, we're also putting a small uh, casual play field uh, where they can have picnics or they could have small events, fundraisers, that type of thing on the property. Regarding the noise issue, uh, Eric brought up, we did provide a cut sheet of the generator and it, uh, it was an eight and a half by 11 that came along with the traffic study and some of the other documents. Um, <clears throat> the generators come in a package, it's an enclosure that surrounds the generator to protect it from the weather. And they can be built to any acoustical rating we need basically. And the one that we've uh, landed on at this point is 65 decibels DBA, which is an average decibel output at 55 feet. And <clears throat> uh, commercial industrial, I believe allows 70 at the lot line. So we think we're in the right ballpark there, but um, we'd like you to Look at those and let us know if you need more information on that. As far as site lighting goes, um, we will get you the height. We know that they're 12 foot poles and the cut sheet information was in the, uh, or the, the lighting uh, manufacturer information was in the civil drawings. 
who usually does the lighting. Um, but we can get you more detailed cut sheets anytime you'd like. Uh, as far as the building lighting goes, the building has a large overhang at both the front and the back, about 15 feet. And it's required on the front so that you have sheltered walkways to the building. Um, there'll be down lighting in the soffits. So those don't show up on a civil drawing because they're part of the architectural reflected ceiling plans. <clears throat> at the uh, ingress, egress at the ends, uh, there'll be lighting on the building. So there'll be wall packs and they will also be 100% uh, cutoff fixtures. So, you know, the whole idea is to stay within the dark sky um, preferences that the town has. Um, another nice little feature we're doing over here is uh, a rain garden. So this will be a rock garden with um, uh, rain chains that come down into it and let some of the roof water go right down into the ground and recharge groundwater. <clears throat> There are also two plazas, one for patients to wait, uh, whether they're being picked up or if a caregiver's there with a patient who's in treatment. And back in the back, uh, a place for the actual uh, clinicians to sit and be somewhat connected to nature and have some nice views of beautiful landscaping on a hectic day. Um, <clears throat> this is an overall shot from above. This, displays the solar panels and a clear story that will bring light into all the areas where patients access. Uh, we've done everything to try to bring that mass down as much as we could. That used to go the whole length of the building, but because it really wasn't needed beyond in the service areas of the building, we, we, um, we sculpted the building down a little bit just to, to make it a little more copacetic with uh, local opinion. <clears throat> you can see the ambulance garage off in the back. Uh, we don't have the LIRR and some of the other little things in here because this is just um, <clears throat> sort of uh, faked in at the moment, but we could always pick that up at some point. <clears throat> and this is a view from the southeast corner. Um, so as you're driving in to drop off a patient, this is what you'll see. There's a little plaza that I mentioned earlier. Uh, very glassy waiting areas to give people uh, good daylighting and connection to nature. Um, we're using a, a wood-like finish. We can't really use real wood in a hospital because it's um, a flame spread issue, but we're using a, a, a material that will look every bit like wood, like oak wood, uh, which we think is harmonious with the local context. And, you know, we're trying to just make this as as comfortable in the community as possible, a place that you'll all like for years to come. What's the issue with the wood and the hospital? Uh, it's flame spread. It's flammable. So hospitals have to be built out of non-combustible construction. So, so what is the non-flammable wood-like material you're It's proposing? It's called Trespa. It's a phenolic resin panel, and it's got okay. a, a wood print on it. Um, okay. it it's long-lasting material, very durable. Also easier to maintain than wood and hospitals typically prefer not to have high maintenance materials on their exterior envelope. And is it that sort of ochre color or is it something? <clears throat> It'll look like oak, like It'll finished like oak, oak wood. Yeah. And we're carrying some of that finish into the interior as well, but that's really not the, the uh, purpose of this particular presentation. So we didn't really bring those renderings into this. Very good. You have anything else or can we no i think that's you know short and sweet i think if you <laughs> have questions feel free to ask okay glad okay. to answer them thanks i have a question for eric sam if you think i i, I can we can it wait until we get to yeah, the conversation with us? All right, let's do that all right ian yours so yeah. Uh, well, thank thank you very much for the applicant and to uh, to Eric and the planning department. Of course, uh, this is a it's a big project. I think it's important, especially you know now, now considering we're in the middle of a pandemic, a hurricane just passed through, kind of. Uh, so it's obvious why we need something like this, and I think that the that's why the town has been has been seeking it. 
Uh, I do think it's also a significant project, and we've got to be careful of the, the negative impacts as well as the positive that obviously come along with having something like this. Um, as far as the zone change, I was one who was not ready to commit to, to endorsing it last time, and I, and I, I frankly remain in the same position, uh, and that's because I think that so much of this is going to depend on the site plan details, the traffic, uh, et cetera. The town board has obviously already decided that they want this to be the location. I think they have more information than us, frankly, uh, and they lease the site. So I'm not opposed to the zone change by any means. I just feel from a planning standpoint, we're premature because we haven't gone through all the details that we're going to touch on tonight. And so um, I think the point is probably moved. The planning department, the planning board has already recommended a zone change, but uh, I still remain a little bit agnostic until we go through the, the details of the site plan. Um, I think the, I'm going to be as brief as I can, by the way, there's a lot to touch on here, but I want to try to save some time for other members and, and discussion. The additional info the planning department recommended, uh, I, you know, it's laid out clearly in the memo. I would of course be supportive of that and I'm sure other things will come up. Uh, the parking that you guys came up with, uh, I think it's very prudent to add extra parking. Uh, you know, hopefully you don't need it most of the time, but I think the point of a facility like this is to have, have it there for when you when you do need it. So that the, the parking calculations you came up with and the, the layout looks looks good to me. I do think the helipad is an important feature of this site because um, because frankly, I don't think I would be supportive of just medical offices in this location. Um, I think the point of having this facility here is for emergency services, emergency purposes. And I think that a helipad is, is essential there. So I get that if it's located off site, it might not be part of this review exactly, but I would want to know that we have a plan to be able to get people in by air and out by air, because I think that that's an essential part of, of the need this is trying to, to fill. Um, I guess I'll leave that there, except for to say that when we do talk about a helipad and I hope that we do more, we'd want to make sure that the grades and the, the routes and, and access and everything all makes sense. Um, even though we would hope it would be infrequently used, we want to make sure that it works well when it uh, was necessary. Um, I, I do think on this plan, we're going to want to hire our own engineer. Um, I think that, again, this is a very significant and important project. I think the drainage, um, ADA, I think the whole site plan, I, it sounds like there's been a ton of work done on the applicant's end, and, and I fully trust that and respect it but i think of all of all the things we've seen since we don't have our own town you know position of engineer this is one that i think i'd really want us to look at uh very very closely in terms of drainage uh and also in terms of traffic which frankly i think the traffic is the the biggest issue here um you know i i think that we can accept some increased traffic because of the importance of a project like this but I do want to make sure that we're not, it's a tough spot. I mean, that, that, that area of, of 27 right now, or Montauk Highway is already backed up pretty frequently. Um, and I would just want to make sure that, and you're talking about putting a light there, maybe I would want to make sure that the town reviews this themselves. Um, and that's not to say anything about the traffic study you conducted, uh, but adding a light is a significant uh, detail and, and any other sort of traffic, um, you know, reduction or traffic increase or service reduction is, is something we should think about very, very carefully in, in that location. Um, so I would want to hire an engineer to look at drainage and, and perhaps a second engineer to look at traffic unless we, we can find one that does both. But I wouldn't want to rely solely on an applicant's um, experts for, for, for that. Um, the generator uh, and the noise issues, it sounds like you're fully comfortable meeting our um, noise standards, and I'm, I'm good with that, but I do think you'll have to, to meet those. I do think it would be absurd to expect that the helicopters, the helipad, to, to fall within that, and I think that if um, there's a helicopter bringing somebody or taking somebody away, then um, we can deal with the noise for, for that moment and hope it doesn't happen too often. Um, sanitary. Obviously important. I, it sounds like you have an alternative plan that, that is good, and I'll rely on the health department to give guidance on that. Uh, the archaeology, I think, is also important. It sounds like you're working with the planning department and an archaeologist to make sure that if there's any sensitive um, 
artifacts there or, or areas that, that we'll make sure we take care of that and respect it. Um, I think the 50 foot buffer, um, I would happily be part of a majority plus one if that becomes a determination that, that we could re relax that buffer. Uh, as part of that, I do think the bike path would be important. The town is always uh, talking about a bike path in this general area. And so I think if the applicant gave us a bike path, um, I would certainly vote to um, allow drainage structures in the, the 50 foot buffer. And I think that, that frankly, the previous determination was set up so that in a case like this, we're allowed to change it because I think it makes sense based on this plan. Um, lighting the landscaping, I don't wanna to get too much into that. Your, your plan uh, looks looks beautiful, frankly. I think the building is nice, I think the layout is nice, I think the landscaping looks nice. I think the details will be important that we work with the planning department to make sure that, that the trees don't interfere with the drainage, with the septic, uh, that the lighting, the lumens are right and all of that stuff. But I think we're premature because I think right now we wanna make sure that this is the right place in terms of traffic layout, um, that it will fit here. Um, and I wouldn't do, I would personally recommend you don't do too much work on lighting and landscaping until um, we get a little closer in case there are tweaks here and there. Um, so yeah, those are my initial thoughts. Uh, I'll emphasize again, the importance of a, a town hired engineer to, to go over some of the more sensitive um, aspects of this. But uh, I look forward to working through this application. I think it's a big need and I think we should be thorough and make sure that uh, the right project is put here if it goes. Ian, thank you very much for the thoroughness of that report. Um, this is a big project, there's no question about it, and uh, an important project. So I think I'd like everybody on the board to be able to chime in and, uh, you know, set forth what they think is important and things that we need to consider from a planning point of view. Uh, with that, at the virtual table, uh, let's start with Ed. We'll work our way around to Sharon. So, Ed? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, great job, everybody. Really, you know, like, thorough presentation from everybody. Thank you very much. You know, like Ian said, this is obviously a really important project for the town, and I'm, I'm really pleased this is going forward. Um, I, I actually am very supportive of, of the zoning change for this particular location. I, I think that Eric's recommendation that the affordable housing overlay uh, be moved to another four and a half acre site somewhere else is a really good one. I think we need to make that recommendation to, to, the, uh, mm -hmm. to the town board. Uh, I know the ball fields are already being located, but yeah, I think this is actually a really great spot for this. The, you know, like Ian has said, traffic is really going to be the biggest issue for us here. There's no question about it. Um, and I, you know, I think uh, we do, we do want to get some updates to the plan as you've suggested that you're going to do. I, I, I would think that a traffic light is going to be imperative here. Uh, and that is, you know, going to have a big in, impact on traffic flow between East Hampton and Amagansett. So I think a lot more details required around all of that. Um, I also feel, as Ian does, that the, you know, the, the helipad is a really important piece of this, you know, as much as anything to get people out of there to a larger facility. And uh, I think it, it is a really, you know, it's an urgent need in the town to have that that capability. So I, I definitely support that. I think we need to be looking at that down the line when the time comes. I'm kind of curious as to whether or not there are any standards for how many medevac trips might be generated by a facility of this size. Is there anything like that, Eric, or anyone else? Do we have any sort of sense for that? No, as far as how, well, it's all dependent on the amount of emergencies. There are some studies, um, at least from 2018, that I believe there were 20 uh, medevac people out of, out of the town of East Hampton at different sites, but that includes accident sites where they will still, at, you know, arguably some people will be medevac right from an, uh, an accident site to Stony Brook, yeah. rather than coming to our facility and then going forward. So it's, it's sort of difficult to tell at this point in time how many, but at least in 2018, there was just as a benchmark, there were 20 medevac emergencies. Okay. Well then no, that's, that's an interesting number to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's many fewer than I might've thought actually. Where, where from? I can get that information for you. I was just informed that from the hospital. So 
from, in from South the town Hampton. of East Hampton, that they were medevaced from the town of East Hampton, that there's a report from 2018 indicating that there were yeah. 20. I thought that went all the way out to Montauk, actually. Yeah, right. To, to the, the yeah. Montauk, to of the course. Test. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. so that that's yeah. it's significant to know that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so just in the interest of time here, I'll kind of wrap it up. But my only other thought here is that I think the you know the bike path is important. And um, I would be willing to kind of look at locating some of those drainage structures uh, in uh, differently to accommodate that. because uh, I, I do think having a continuous bike path along that. Railroad uh, right away is a really great thing. So I'll leave it at that and pass it on to my colleagues. Very good. Thank you, Ed. All right, Lou, thank you for your patience on that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, the question I had uh, for Eric is I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, the the <clears throat> area, the property is zoned parks and uh, conservation. Right. Yet it has this designation of affordable housing overlay district. So my confusion is how could you have both? How could you have a property that contains a ball field and be designated for affordable housing? Well, you're right. It doesn't make sense. Um, and it's the result. Um, I tried to chronicle it a little bit or put it in chronological order. Um, the zoning history of the property it was zoned CI, which they're requesting to be changed to now, uh, from 1957 when zoning was adopted until um, the subdivision of this property and the, the three surrounding ones, uh, at which time there was an Article 78, there was an um, agreement. They didn't, the board at the time didn't want to see that much commercial industrial development um, in the area, uh, and as part of that, they rezoned the property to a residence. Um, at that, I believe shortly after that is when the affordable housing designation went on it because it made sense. It was town owned, it was um, zoned a residence. And um, you know what I mean? It was a, a site that could be appropriate for affordable housing. At, that never happened. And the town um, proceeded to build uh, active recreation in the form of the ball fields. And then in 2005, um, they did, well, they built the ball fields in uh, 1997. Then in 2005, when the um, uh, town comprehensive plan was updated, it was noted that there's recreational facilities here. It's a park. Why not make this park some conservation? Um, so that's where that came from. But they never removed the affordable housing overlay designation. Would have made sense to have done so at the time. Yeah. Um, okay. You, you really can't develop it as an affordable housing development if it's zoned PC. It has to have right. a well, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter with regard to uh, what's in front of us with regard to this application. The only reason I bring it up is uh, because the planning department recommends that the ball fields be relocated somewhere else so that we don't lose that and I'm all for that. I agree with that. And it also recommends that uh, four and a half acres be designated elsewhere as, uh, as well as affordable housing uh, overlay uh, district designation. So it just seems that uh, we're getting, if, they, if that happens, and I actually I'm for that, I, I agree with that, but I'm just curious. I mean, if we get that, we're really getting something that in, you know, in my mind, we really don't deserve because we didn't have the opportunity to build affordable housing on this location and have the uh, the ball fields, but now we're asking that both of those things be uh, relocated somewhere else. But anyway, it's not a big deal. It's just you know a matter of, that was confusing to me. And yeah, no, I I, I see I see your point there um, because even though it has an affordable housing overlay designation, it's sort of a um, I don't know what the term to use, an impotent one, because it's the underlying zoning is PC. Um, but I would think that, I just think it's prudent that uh, if you're going to lose that designation, um, you know, regardless of this project, we need more lots throughout the town to have yeah, uh, to be absolutely. affordable housing. And it doesn't have to be um, a new purchase by the town. Um, it doesn't have to be one lot that's four and a half acres. It, it's just um, encouraging that if that, uh, designation is going to be removed from four and a half acres of town land, that that be, um, you know, uh, uh, 
transferred to, an, an, you know, or provided elsewhere within the town, just as we have intended all along, that if we're losing the resource of the baseball fields, that those would be relocated. And, and yeah. you know, Can I just say something, Eric? Can you just clarify that you're not asking the applicant to relocate this affordable housing overlay? Um, because obviously the relocation of the baseball fields was addressed in the lease with the town board. We've agreed to submit a sum of money towards that. The town board's created a committee to relocate those baseball fields. Um, it's also something that was a requirement of the state legislation that authorized us to alienate this parkland or authorize the town to do that. But for rezoning something or, or adding an affordable housing overlay onto additional properties, it seems to me the town would need to entail a study to determine what properties that would be most appropriate to do that on, et cetera. And it's, it's, um, you had told to me, um, and I just want you to confirm that for everyone on the board, that it would not be our responsibility as the hospital to relocate that affordable housing. Sure. Overlay. Yeah, um, what I'm saying, and Liz makes a good point to be clear, I'm not saying that the applicant should either purchase property or in any way um, be responsible for uh, the relocation or um, you know the, the transfer or the moving of affordable housing overlay designations in the town. That's the sole purview of the town board. My point is just that I think that the town board should recommend that the, uh, the planning board should recommend that the town board uh, consider that and do that in the future. But I'm not saying that that's on the applicant. As, you know, you. as as concerned. Okay, as far as uh, my opinion of the uh, proposal, I think the applicant has done a great job um, and the planning department and Eric especially uh, has done a really uh, thorough job as well. Uh, I'll just touch upon some of the items that I think are important either uh, where I'm in favor or uh, I, I have a negative opinion about. But I think at this stage, uh, I think uh, Ian mentioned this, I think there's a lot of details that need to be worked out. Not a lot of details, but this needs to be tweaked as we all uh, know. Uh, so uh, at this point, I'm just, my, my opinion is going to be in broad strokes with regard to some of these topics. Um, I think the parking it looks good to me. It's, you know, the fact that you've got more parking spaces than uh, would be required under any kind of metric or under the metrics that you've, uh, that are appropriate is a good thing. So uh, the, that is very favorable in my eyes. Uh, the helipad thing, um, you, you know, I think it is important that you have a helipad, but I do recognize the fact that that's not part of this application that we're uh, charged with reviewing or commenting on or uh, authorized to uh, approve or disapprove. Um, the, um, the archaeology... Um, I'm, you know, I, I think uh, that it's not necessary to do any more uh, extensive work on that, but the fact that the applicant is willing to uh, do further study is fine. Uh, but, you know, I think based on what I've read, uh, the studies that have been done in the past, um, it looks like, you know, that there's almost zero chance that there would be any, uh, any issues with uh, archaeology uh, on this site. Uh, the noise level, uh, what, you know, what you said about the generator is uh, perfectly acceptable to me. Uh, the one area that I do have uh, concern with and I think that, you know, we really need to be careful about, and I would be something that I would like to take much more uh, uh, of a concern with is the, uh, is the traffic flow and the traffic study. I mean, I don't like the idea of putting a traffic light on 27, uh, but you know, realistically speaking, 
what we're doing here is we're, we're taking an area that is hardly ever used, especially in the winter. I don't think it's ever used in the winter. The ball fields aren't used. And we're replacing it with something that is going to have much more traffic than we have now. So in terms of adding traffic flow to that site, it's going to be significant. And um, I think we, we need to do a very, very uh, careful study of what that entails and make sure that we get that right. So that's one item that uh, needs a little bit more than just tweaking. Um, uh, I put a heavy emphasis uh, on, on that area. Um, as far as the 50-foot buffer, I'm all for uh voting having that majority vote plus one to uh declare that to be uh used as uh, indicated i like the idea of the bike path i i think that's that's really essential i would hate to see that not happen um let's see what else the landscaping, it looks, you know, again, this is something that needs to be tweaked. But so far, what you've shown on your site plan looks beautiful to me. It looks wonderful. I, I'm all for what you're trying to do. Um, I do have, you know, I think Eric makes a good point with the, uh, the sanitary system and planting those trees uh, near the sanitary system. Um, and I'm sure you'll do the right thing when it comes to the lighting. So that's another minor item in my eyes that just requires uh, tweaking. Other than that, uh, I'm glad this, uh, this project is uh, going forward. I hope it goes forward uh, quickly. And, um, and that's it for me. Thanks very much, Lou. Kathy. Kathy, you're muted. Sorry go. about that. <clears throat> Thanks for the reminder. Um, I don't have a lot to add. I just want to remind the uh, public that this is an initial review, which is a different kind of an assessment that the board does. And I want to thank the applicant for doing such a great job. Um, I think it gave us lots of information and, and Eric did a particularly uh, good uh, job on the memo. Um, my only... Uh, you know, this is a funny kind of hybrid, this piece of land, <clears throat> formerly residential, formerly CI, then residential, now parks and conservation, now going back to CI. It makes the planning that the planning board is responsible for, you know, overseeing a little hard to um, follow because the... Uh, imperatives for the various zoning districts have been flip-flopping a lot over the last several decades. Uh, that isn't to say I don't think this is a useful, I think this is a really good idea for this space. I think it's a natural fit to the healthcare foundation building uh, nearby. Um, we clearly need this sort of emergency service, especially with so many um, people who don't have health insurance. And I think this pandemic has really shown a light on that and have a need to go to the emergency room for things that many of us would normally go to a doctor for. Um, but that does underscore the need, I think, for a more thorough traffic study. I know the applicant has offered to revisit its 2016 um, traffic uh, projections, but I think Eric's done a pretty good job of, uh, you know, it's directing them where they need to go. But I want to second Ian's suggestion that we hire our own traffic specialist for this, <clears throat> because I think we need to be responsible to that. This is a very congested area of town, especially during the uh, commutation hours. And I think as Lou points out, you know, the ball fields that are behind it now are pretty benign use, <clears throat> a very seasonal uh, use. 
and that the traffic impacts are are just too hard for us to um, anticipate in that respect. Um, I would uh, I agree with all the you know the suggestions to maybe move the uh, bike path a little to the north so it doesn't interfere with the um, septic system and also to re revise the planting of the large trees or just make sure you don't have root interference with those subterranean um, septic pieces. I'm just looking here at a little bit. Just want to make note for the public too that. A traffic light is something that the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles would be in charge of installing, and it's unclear whether a recommendation to do so either by our board, the applicant, or the town board would be um, acted upon by the DMV. So I don't think that's a natural conclusion uh, just that we might suggest such a thing. And I, for one, do not like traffic lights. They just... I'd rather see some kind of a roundabout if we need it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I'd like also to say that I second the idea, you know, the when the town assesses, when we look at our population and we look at the needs for recreation and we look for the needs for affordable housing, uh, both of which are um, in scarce supply for our community, I think there are uh, places that um, the people that advise the town board on these things look to. So the um, moving these, you know, the request to find additional recreation space for these ball fields, and again, additional affordable housing overlay for the uh, affordable housing units. Randy can speak more to this because he works um, specifically on that committee. But, you know, as we go forward, and more and more of our land is used to things like this and affordable housing just keeps falling off the list of priorities. We have less and less opportunity to offer housing to, you know, actually the kinds of emergency service workers that would be working in such a facility. So, it, uh, you know, I, I would second that and I would ask uh, the town board to, to um, incorporate a substitute for that um, this acreage in some other part of town. I don't even know if that's possible because we don't have that many places that work for it, but I just wanted to um, put that vote in. I uh, <clears throat> would like to see you bring the generator acoustics down even further. There are residential properties to the north and east um, that I think even though the train runs there, I know people are going to say, well, the train runs there, but um, the north and east, uh, you can hear those generators at night. So if that has to go on, I think that would be important. Um, I recognize that the helipad is considered a necessity, um, you know, for uh, emergency transport. And I'm glad to hear that Liz says that there were only 20 uh, trips from the whole town of East Hampton, many of which may have generated from the particular accident or event site. So that, um, but we will have to assess as part of this site how the helipad will be accessed. That's the part that involves us. Is, and I think Eric made a good point in his memo to say there needs to be flat and um, properly, the, the transport path needs to have proper. Um, to, you know, it can't be bumpy. You can't be, you know, running someone along in a gurney from the heliport to the to the facility. Um, I have one more thing. Oh, I know. If I think it's very unlikely this will happen, but given the history of this lot, if for some reason this doesn't doesn't occur, or the um, you know at some point because the hospital is moving west to the old Southampton Stony Brook, Southampton College campus, that um, I would like to see a covenant to say that this property should return to, you know, residential use with an affordable housing overlay on it and all the rest are otherwise dedicated to the uses it was originally conceived to be for, um, you know, in case this is not, it doesn't come to fruition or more likely in my view now, especially with this pandemic, we need to find a bigger place and just have a second hospital somewhere. Um, it just opens another discussion for me about how this uh, particular facility might expand on the land it's on now. But again, this is a an initial review. 
I think you guys did a great job. And uh, those are my comments at this point. Thanks very much, Kathy. Um, Randy, you're up. Randy, you're muted. Hi. Thank you. Hi, thanks, Sam. Uh, great job by really a nice, nice uh, work by the architect, by the attorney, by the planning department. And I uh, appreciate hearing my colleagues' comments. It is a, it is a big project. Um, I read recently read an interview with, I think, the uh, CEO of the hospital, <clears throat> where uh, he said that <clears throat> this facility is somewhat of a transfer station for emergency cases. Uh, he doesn't anticipate they're going to do surgery there, doesn't anticipate they're going to deliver babies there. Of course, if they had to, they would. But, Sometimes uh, they have no choice. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I, as Kathy said, it is, a, it is a hybrid. It seems to me, looking at the floor plan, that a, a lot of the role this will play will be to give people access to diagnostic equipment. Um, so I think it's important that we, we keep that in mind. I don't know if we have a narrative on the proposed use of this facility, but it might be useful for us to have a narrative about how this, a short narrative about how this is intended to be used. Um, <clears throat> I also wonder, uh, as part of the uh, impact analysis, I wondered if this facility is intended to replace our existing walk-in facilities. There's, there's one in Amagansett, there's one in Wayne Scott. Um, I don't know if there's one in Montauk, Lou might know. But we do have these emergency walk-in facilities that I think are either private or not-for-profit. And I'm wondering if this facility would in effect put them out of business. Is that the, and if that's what you're thinking that you're gonna take the place of those facilities. Um, I'm pretty sure Southampton Hospital and Meeting House Lane Medical bought out Wayne Scott walk-in. So I think that's already part of that conglomerate. I may be wrong about that. I don't know about Emmy Ganza, right. but I know right. that Wayne Scott is part of the, is affiliated at this point. This is, this is gonna be run by the state of New York through SUNY as an emergency room. Um, you're right, that's, I, I can get a narrative with respect to the treatment available on site, but it will be open 24 seven to allow for emergencies and to address emergencies in this community. Which are higher acuity than walk-in clinics usually. Yeah, that makes sense. What did you say? A higher higher acuity patients would come here. You wouldn't. They might not be able to treat them in the walk-in uh, so, clinics. But there, do you, would you say there's overlap? In other words, that the there's there's less there's going to be less demand for the walk-in or. No, I don't think that's I don't think that's really the case. Um, this is this is a, a need that has been there for a long time. There's really no emergency services there, um, and they can do more than the walk-in clinics can. Uh, they also have a stat lab and all these imaging modalities, which are required for the ED. So, despite the fact that it seems like uh, largely loaded towards outpatient, it's it's really all there for the ED, primarily. I guess the idea is that it saves the real emergencies from having to drag themselves uh, 40 minutes or half an hour or however long it might take to get some to of, the meeting house. Yeah, right? someone might die by the time they get to Southampton uh, you know, Hospital or something. Yeah. If they had a stroke or whatever, they need to come here and get analyzed quickly. And, yeah, but I, I, I appreciate that, but I also think it's important for us to understand that that this is really a transfer station to uh, either Southampton, Stony Brook, Southampton Hospital, or to Stony Brook for. I think it, yeah, I agree. I think me. that's a good point. 
I, I think, you know, probably more than 75 to 80 percent of the patients wouldn't be transferred. They would treat them here and they'd go back home. OK. Bob, Bob Challoner said that in the interview, actually. OK, so the um, maybe even more. So if I need an MRI, I could go to this facility. But if I if I had a heart attack or a stroke or I would probably be sort of stabilized at this facility and then right. take it. I think yes. the discussion also, if I may, is that this site will be a 911 receiving location. Um, I believe that the hospital actually operates all the East Hampton urgent cares already. Um, and urgent cares are not 911 receiving locations, whereas this will be. So that's the distinction. Well, that's interesting. If, I, if they, uh, as, as you're, you're all saying, that they've, the hospital's already taking over those walk-in facilities. Um, so, uh, again, as the, our first uh, look at this, I was glad to hear um, Elizabeth say that the, the issue of alienation of parkland had been addressed. Yes. So the state legislature required the, the replacement of the ball fields. Did they require any other conditions of the alienation or... No, it was, um, they, they had a condition, I believe, and I can send you, I can submit it to the planning board so you can see the actual bill that was passed. I believe it was to um, make sure we replace the parks and recreation ball fields um, of equal uh, or similar size, like 4.5 acres. Um, and uh, we've agreed to do that pursuant to our lease already. So. Okay. All right, so that that's good. The permission granted to the town of East Hampton to alienate this parkland. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be great for our record to have that bill if you have. I'm happy to submit that. Okay. Um, as far as the affordable housing, um, Eric, I, I I think Eric makes a very good point. What what had been happening in East Hampton is that, you know, that the town in its master planning process had designated certain sites as appropriate for housing, which in some sort of vague theory was going to be enough to handle the need. And yet what was happening is that those sites were being used for other purposes so that in theory, the need was, was getting whittled, the uh, potential to address the need was getting whittled away. And, um, but I do uh, sit on the committee, and I would say that the uh, the town board has acquired somewhere around 25 acres at three sites for housing, none of which is uh, has that overlay on it at the present time, but all three of which they're considering placing the overlay. So we do we do have uh, likely. We're going to get uh, somewhere around 25 acres of affordable housing overlay, and to and in part it will uh, compensate for the loss of this. Um, the helipad. <clears throat> I guess my question is: is would you would the applicant would you consider this site? Would you pursue this site if you? Didn't if you didn't know you would get a helipad next door or on site. What if what if you knew that you could not get a helipad next door or on this site? Would you still be interested in this site? It's not a requirement by the Facility Guidelines Institute nor the Department of Health. So you know it doesn't. It's not a deal breaker from health code standpoint. Um, I don't know the answer to the other piece. I don't know, Liz, if you talked about that with. No, we have, you know, we obviously were going to uh, explore the heli helipad or helistop uh, a lot in a lot more detail with the town board. Um, and also, it's important to note that um, a Suffolk County police medevac, I believe they can land anywhere it's deemed safe and appropriate to do so in an emergency. So. You know, but we do want to um, create some sort of access for them uh, to safely transport patients that need that care. And so, we wanted it close. We wanted it within a very short drive, a very short ambulance drive. Um, 
I, I guess it goes, as my colleagues have said, I, I think it goes to the question of whether or not this is the helipad is actually part of the site plan or not. Certainly access to, access to it is. And especially if, if, you, if you tend to think that you would, you would not pursue this site or you might not, if you didn't have the helipad, then it, it becomes sort of an essential ingredient. So I, I just, I just, I, I agree with my colleagues that I think, I think we need to try to get some more clarity about the helipad, where it might be, how it's going to be laid out, and how you're going to get access to it. So we will get more information for you. Uh, and just so you know, I mean, that was the closest piece of land that looked vacant. And, you know, without talking to other people about what else might be vacant nearby, it was it was a shot at where we could put it that's close. So okay. there may be other suitable par parcels nearby. We just, we would need to talk to you about that. Of course, we, and we do have, we do have two airfields, but they're not near the site. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anything else, Randy? Yeah, a couple other things. So my my thought on the uh, the buffer, um, I kind of like the idea that we protect that buffer. You know, we'd have to read, maybe delve a little deeper into what the um, initial intent was. But <clears throat> and the reason the reason I like that <clears throat> the idea of trying to put the wastewater the wastewater system and the drainage systems on outside of the buffer is is because it does it does force you to sharpen your pencils on the design and perhaps even make the building a little smaller which would mitigate some of the other impacts um, and I I do think that one of the things we we do not want is we don't really want a lot of um, landscaping here that is maintained. You know, preferably we would want uh, the natural understory. Uh, you know, we we would prefer not to see irrigation, not to see fertilizer, not to see pesticide, not to see okay. herbicide, and. The, one of the major uh, public water supply wells is several hundred feet to the east here, which is usually, uh, I don't know if it triggers a, a type one as well, but it's there's a significant uh, public water supply facility very near this site. I don't know which way the water's going. I think we would want to know if uh, the town board and their secrets should take a look at which way the groundwater is moving, um, what what type of medical waste, what type of, uh, I know that the nitrogen system is going to take care of nitrogen, but is it going to take care of any other, uh, any other chemicals in the waste stream? So I think maybe s some more information about the impact on groundwater and, but again, I, I, I tend to want to protect that 50 foot buffer for the bike path and for screening. Um, and also, even if it means uh, making the project a little less intense, um, and we should, we should probably take a look at the CNRs from the Pospisil. Uh, let's see. And, uh, and as others had said, the the idea that the land the landscaping on the buffer and the conflict with the root systems and the drainage structures and the wastewater system would be another reason to to keep them separate. Um, the ambulance garage is that is that is there going to be any ma uh, maintenance on the ambulance in that? garage space no, no no not intended that's not a shop it's a, a parking place because diesels need to be kept warm and free of ice 
and whatnot if they need to work quickly. So, you know, that's the idea there. Um, and to address your point about landscaping, all the landscaping selected for this site is selected to uh, be harmonious with the local flora and be no, there is no irrigation proposed whatsoever. So, you know, we're not, we're not looking to do those kinds of things. We, we always approach projects that way. We do not want to do highly manicured, you know, fertilized weed killed uh, type sites. So. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the play field, I thought perhaps if we, if we did, the board did uh, reach a consensus that they wanted to protect that buffer, the play, the play field or the fund, potential fundraising field struck me as a possible place where, where some more infrastructure could be, but that's pretty- Well, I mean, Bob, Bob, if you could chime in here, I think we could actually bury those in under the pavement too, but oh, okay. for service reasons, we, we didn't really like putting them there. Um, getting them a little further from the building is so, better. Um, that's exactly right. That's why we put them in the buffer was so that they are serviceable without being in the way of an ambulance coming through. Okay. You think that the, the proposed play field or uh, fundraising field is a potential alternate it's, site? It's a long ways away. It's, okay. it's you know, yeah. you're, you're running hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of pipe for a long ways to, to get the discharge where you want it. So, I mean, um, we have to be cognizant of economics as well. I hear you. Now, the, <laughs> the 15 foot overhang on the back, I heard that there's a 15 foot overhang on the front, which I understand that's for shelter. Yep. What's the purpose of the one on the back? Ambulances need to be sheltered when okay. they drop off patients and the loading zone also has to be sheltered when you drop okay. off patients. Uh, I agree with the or colleagues. Supplies. Sorry. <laughs> about uh, we want to have our consulting engineer look at traffic and uh, drainage, mm -hmm. perhaps gr perhaps groundwater um, groundwater flow direction. Uh, the, I would agree with that. The generator, you know, if we can get it quiet, it's not it's not a particularly noise sensitive area. Uh, but there are some residences across the tracks. Uh, train will be louder. <laughs> train will be a lot louder. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> and it happens a lot more frequently. <laughs> um, okay, that's it for me. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it, Sharon. Sharon yeah, I think uh, I think everybody has a lot to say. This is a preliminary, you know, review, and there's still going to be a lot of work to do uh, to move this forward, but. I think just to stress some of the things that I'm concerned about, and I would say really it's, you know, uh, it's really going to be the traffic for me. Um, you know, that area is, as everybody has mentioned, quite congested as it is, and especially in the summer. I mean, it's, it's backed up there all the time. So I think that's going to be an important piece uh, for us to study and how this affects uh, the, the traffic flow. Um, you know, and everybody has had great things to say about just the site plan, um, you know, in general. So I don't want to prolong this, uh, prolong it. Um, the other thing what I would say is uh, that, you know, I'm okay with, you know, some of these structures in the buffer, but I do want to make sure that the um, bike path is preserved. I think that's a really important part, but I, I'm going to leave it at that. I think everything has been discussed and um, a lot of good points have been made. I just want to add something, Sam, if I may. Um, I, I, I meant to uh, second the planning department's um, uh, suggestion to do a thorough archaeological uh, survey. I think this is a very significant part of the Montaukett um, burial grounds, and I think it, it behooves us, and I know the applicant is willing, but it behooves us at this point in time, particularly to be sensitive to these needs, and I wanted to, I meant to mention that earlier. And I, I agree with you on that, actually. I, I think it's important and something that we should take into, the, the applicant will, I'm sure, take it into consideration. 
does for uh, Jody and Ed, we we can hear you guys. If Ed wants to sit down next near you, socially distance, that, oh, that probably should work. Um, the um, first of all, thank you to the applicant for the incredibly thorough job. Of it. Thank you to Eric and to the planning department for the equally incredible and thorough job you did, and Ian for your incredibly thorough job. Uh, this is, nice this job, is, Ian. Yeah, really. This is a very important project, in my opinion. It's one of the most important projects going on in the town. I, I also say that I, I think this is an, it's important because, for one thing, it saves lives. And uh, you know, every time I see an ambulance, particularly on a say a Saturday in July or August, crawling through Bridgehampton, crawling through Watermill or Wainscott, uh, and I say to myself, you know. It really would be a useful thing to have a, at least an emergency facility, something here, so that if somebody gets into trouble in Montauk or Amagansett or in East Hampton, that they don't have to take their, well, you know, risk their lives uh, in the back of an ambulance. So I, I, I think this is an important project. Um, and everybody, you know, like, like Sharon just said, this is an initial review. We're going to have plenty of revisits and we'll sharpen our questions and come up with more and more important issues. The only thing I, I uh, there's two things. First of all, it, I think somebody said that there's DMV, it's actually the Department of Transportation because it's Route 27 that's going to govern whether there's a traffic light or not. But I also would echo, didn't Kathy the uh, a tr roundabout traffic circle there. I think, you know, there's, there's a traffic light, I don't know, a quarter mile away over on the corner of Egypt Lane and uh, not Egypt, yeah. And uh, it backs up all the way here sometimes. So a roundabout might be the thing to do. And again, it's the long-term issue and we're gonna have to involve the DOT in it, but it's something that's important. Um, I, I, as far as the uh, heliport is, con the, uh, <laughs> the landing area for helicopters is concerned, I, I agree with those who say that it's an emergency facility and you know, you really need it. Uh, I, I understand it's not necessarily part of our review because it's not going to be on this parcel, but be that as it may, I would endorse it. The, the one thing I, I, I um, would like to mention is there was suggestions to be a narrative, uh, and I'm glad to hear Council uh, Ms. Vale said, um, you know, that you were positive on that. The one thing I would like the narrative to take into consideration is the possibility of what I'm going to call mission creep. Um, you know, right now we're talking about an emergency facility, and I understand that that's the immediate need. But, you know, it's very possible that as things go on, as time goes on, that this facility will find itself doing things that are not necessarily emergencies. And maybe, you know, it's, it's being run by one of the biggest hospital <laughs> outfits in New York. They, they probably have some understanding of that, of, of how things grow. For example, in my own thinking, I'm thinking that geriatric care might be something that down the road this facility might find itself doing more and more of and the reason i'm concerned about it, whether it's that or anything else uh is because this is an enormously large facility it's a very big building and you know to the extent that that we can keep it this size i would like to keep it this size not see not find ourselves in four years or 10 years or something um, with an application to double its size, to enlarge it. So I think the way to know where we're going in that uh, regard is uh, to maybe just have a sense in the narrative of where the, uh, the hospital thinks it might go. And if they don't think it's going to go anywhere, fine. Then, you know, then, then I'm worrying about nothing. But it's just something that, you know, in the consideration of things, I like to, you know, have it in the mix. So I'm going to go through the questions. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're going to get, you're going to get pretty much everybody on the board um, shaking their head yes. So if anybody wants to add anything, uh, as Sam? I have to, Eric, yes, please. Yeah, I don't mean to sidetrack it. I just wanted to address a couple of things. Um, that, that oh, of course. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, you're so, right. So um, just so that we know this, you know, because um, it's all stuff that came up in the conversation here. Um, so we got an email. Uh, the town has a consulting engineer, as you know, on uh, on call, so to speak. Um, and we contacted them already discussing um, them in particular uh, reviewing the drainage. Uh, 
from my understanding from an email response we got is that there, there's a conflict um, because I believe they worked on, on this drainage plan. Um, David, no. I'm not sure if you, you know that. No, um, Robert De Bruin, who's a civil engineer, is on okay. the call right now. I don't believe they did. Uh, okay. You're not the um, town consultant, Robert, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and, but it might have been somebody who worked on the survey. I don't know who your engineer is. I, I, it's um, McLean. No, no, they, they haven't had anything to do with this project. No? Okay. Because um, I'm just letting everybody know that we got an email that there might be a conflict. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, so, oh, there's Joanne's there. Joanne. Yeah, Raynar is our consulting engineer, and they said that they did the civil work, but we also have another engineering consulting engineer under contract that we can go to. Right. Raynor is just survey, just right. purely right. survey they, and survey. They're looking to or not it's a conflict or not but we do have a second consulting engineer that we can go to if that's the case okay yeah joanne your, your volume is very low i mean if you can speak as loud as possible but i can well, hear we heard her. okay um so uh, then the other thing was um you know I, I don't know that we need an entirely new traffic study. Um, their, their study was very thorough, uh, prepared by Dunn Engineering. Um, my point was just that um, now their, their traffic estimates are out of date because they were um, taking 2015 data and then using the projected annual increases percentages um, to 2018, and obviously that's now in the past. Um, if they update that to 2022, I think that's accurate. And then also the trip generation numbers that they used are based on a facility that's, um, you know, 25% or 26% uh, larger. So I think if they update that, they are giving an accurate, uh, you know, uh, um, an accurate uh, idea of what the generated traffic is going to be. And, you know, even in the report that they have now, they're, they're not saying that they're not going to have an impact on traffic. It clearly says in the study, you know, we, we expect that the level of service, the wait time for turning movements will be reduced uh, if this facility is built. And I mean, there that's a fact, uh, you know, everybody knows that. Um, so I don't think that it's something that really, um, that we need to say that the, the methodology that they used in their traffic study is completely incorrect and we need a third party to review this. I, I think that if they just update the numbers, they, they are giving an accurate reflection of the fact that they are producing, uh, proposing to increase traffic in this area. And that's something that the uh, planning board needs to consider, but really um, the town board needs to consider if they're going to grant this zone change, because the zone change really is what opens the door for this facility to be built and for additional traffic. Um, well, all, all the more reason to my mind that we should have our own traffic engineer. It's no insult to the applicant, but you know, it's been a goal of our board to have our own professionals take a look at this uh, with an understanding of what the needs of the town are from our particular perspective. Um, it's, you know, I understand what you're saying, Eric, and it's not that, I don't think that's what we're um, asking. You know, we're not challenging what they have. We're just saying we want another, we want someone else to take another pass at this. Yeah, I, I agree with Kathy. It's, it's not that I don't, I don't trust the study or don't think that it was thorough. It's that I'm not an expert, and I don't know what to do with the information necessarily, and I think that it'd be worthwhile right. to have somebody review their numbers, maybe not redo it, but you know, from the town's perspective, tell us whether they, you know, a traffic light is a good idea, whether this is really problematic, and I think that it would just be nice to have somebody else look at it with solely the town's interest in mind, I kind not of to redo it. I kind of agree with that. It's, it's, it's the impact, I mean, the traffic impact is, is going to be, I and mean, everybody agrees it's going to be huge. And, and if we're dealing with something that's that old already, uh, and especially with the growth in the town the last few years, you know, and, and especially the last six months, uh, you know, I think that we should uh, consider a, a, a further traffic study. No, we're debating a roundabout versus a light. I think well, that honestly, we are not the people to decide that. No, no, we're not. But I'm just, you know, thinking what makes traffic move and roundabout. Yeah. To do that. No, no, I know absolutely. I agree with you, Sam. I think it's worth looking at. 
Okay. But we could we could ask a, our consultant. Right. What makes sense about a tra about a roundabout versus right. And, right. Then, and remember, we still got to get it past Albany, so you know. <laughs> um, can I can I just say two other very quick things? Yes. Quick, quick. Um, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, one, um, I think I know the answer to this, but um, uh, David and, uh, and Liz can, uh, can answer this. Uh, is the intention um, to uh, remove the understory of any of the existing uh, vegetation around the perimeter of the site? Um, we were just wondering, could you catalog That's, the existing... So, so we're in the design development phase, which is, um, you know, usually the, that portion of it would be studied more during the construction document phase. And we're trying to get into that really quickly here. Um, we, I'm certain we could do that. If you're worried about invasive species within the, you know, confines of our the property that we're well, looking at, yes, I'm sure we could probably do that. Yeah, I mean, our worry was That's really the, just that the um, the buffer that, that exists um, would be reduced. Uh, whether right. whether or not you go in there and remove the the Russian olive and all that stuff that's the understory and replace it. With something native um, or leave it. Um, basically, well, our, our recommendation was just there's a buffer now that breaks up all that asphalt in the different sites, and uh, that should remain. To, to be not. clear, we're preserving significant trees. Um, so things that are, you know, two inch caliper, little vines and stuff like that, those would probably get all ripped out. We also don't want a place here breeding uh, vermin. You know, you don't want those around the healthcare facility. So it is good to clear that understory for a lot of reasons. I guess not. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we would just for aesthetic reasons, um, I don't think right. that that's something that the department would recommend. Um, just because you have all those um, parking lots and different uh, facilities. Uh, right. right, but our landscaping will buffer those properties. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that that's the goal. Yeah. Um, and then the only, the only other thing, um, just to sort of leave the planning board with this, Mm -hmm. is that um, the, the town board will, again, um, be discussing the zone change soon. Um, they need to schedule a public hearing first. Um, obviously, there's the required notice period, um, you know, and, and that's going to that's gonna happen. You know, that, that'll probably be scheduled at some point later this month. Um, I think that, you know, I don't think, I know based on the conversation uh, we had at a previous meeting that the town board really wants to get the planning board's insight on this, especially the site plan elements of this project, um, because you guys have more, you know, the most amount of expert expertise on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that they want to know whether or not, um, at least at this initial uh, outset, whether or not there's something in this project that is a major, as far as the site plan elements, the layout, the design, that's a, a major issue, or um, whether or not uh, you feel that there's just some, you know, a collection of issues that need to be addressed, for example, you know, the lighting plan, the, you know, the, the buffer area, things like that. Um, but whether or not um, there's something here that's really going to preclude this um, facility from being built um, just based on site plan standards and, and design requirements. So um, that's something I think that you might want to consider um, narrowing down and maybe sending comments to the town board um, about because, you um, uh, you know, I, I think that they're very much going to value your input on that. Eric, Eric, Eric how, are, how are they going to do the secret process? They've they've declared lead agency. Um, I, I assume they have to make a determination before they vote on the zone change. Right. Uh, yes, of course. Right. Yeah, so, I don't know if Liz wants to handle this. One. Yes, they do. They have to make a secret determination before they can take any action on this application. Which is, you know, this one of the purposes of this meeting is also to allow the planning board to note some of these ideas for secret purposes to the town board and advise them of these potential issues. Right. And the, 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 questions that the, the questions that the planning department have presented are pretty much all focused in this area. Mm -hmm. So let, what I'd like to do is run through them. And um, Sam, Sam, just yeah. one more, one more. I'm not clear whether the town board is taking lead agency on the zone change, CECRA. No, on the whole project. On the, so, so they're doing, they're gonna do CECRA on the site plan itself. Correct, on, on the zone change and the site plan. It's on the entire project, it's one action. It's not one action because it's actions by two different boards, but it's one project. And under CECRA, we can't segment this review. We're asking, and before they can act, we're asking that they, does they have to take lead agency and, and do secret? 
and they're, and 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 they're looking to us for, I guess, guidance, if you will, on 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 the site plan issue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run through the questions. The first one is the you know the the, the most important one is about the the zone change, and I'm just gonna ask everybody to say yes or no. All right, so the so the town board will have a sense of where we are on it. Uh, does the board still support the requested zone change? And should this be granted on the condition of relocation of the ball fields and the establishment of new parcels of equal acreage for the affordable housing overlay dis designation? Um, all those who support the zone change under those conditions, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Nobody, Ian, your microphone is off. Is your mute? I'm not opposed. I, I agree with those conditions, certainly. I just don't. I listen. I, I would not support this zone change if it weren't for this specific project. And until we know more about some of the details of the project, it's hard to say make the zone change. So, <laughs> try, particularly, is my concern. So, are you are you for it? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not against it. But but are no. you going to abstain? You could abstain. I'm abstaining, but I just want to speak in support. I failed to before of the ball field relocation and certainly the town board, you know, finding affordable housing overlay elsewhere. So you are, a, 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 I hate to push you, but are you a yes or a no? He's given his feedback. I mean, it's not like a resolution. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I, I, yeah. I, I abstain. If the zone change is granted, please, you know, account for these other two pieces okay. that will be lost. Sharon, Sharon, did you have something? Sharon? I, I'm not muted, so I said uh, yes. Okay, and so was there any notes? All right, so you got a six or seven <laughs> in favor. Um, all right, the next. Should any additional project details be provided in narrative form, including but not limited to hours of operation for various functions and fluctuations in staff size, number of employees at one time, plans provide for 14 employees, Anticipated number of ambulance trips, anticipated number of hosp of helicopter trips, uh, and and I I would also ask as I did previously that there be something about anticipated changes in use, expansions in use. Well, Does I would also ask it. I think they should include what sort of treatment they're going to be offering and how it will integrate with other medical facilities in the area because that seemed to be a concern. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Anybody else on the narrative that you'd like to add to the narrative? Okay, in that case, does the board find the quantity and design of the parking adequate? If there's yes. any no's. Yes. 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 yes, yes, all around. Okay. And no no's, correct, folks? Okay. Should additional information pertaining to traffic circulation on the town property between the helipad and emergency department be provided? Yes. 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 All around yes on that. Does the board wish to refer the application to the consulting engineer, particularly with regard to proposed drainage? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. Altogether, yes. Sam, are we adding uh, drainage and traffic? I think that's a separate. Yeah, that's a separate one. We may get to that. If we don't, we'll get. We'll change that. Isn't that a separate um, question? Should, I don't know if it is yet. Well. If it isn't, I think we should make it. I, I, I agree with you. Let, let, let's, go, let's go through the end of the question. <laughs> it's not. It's not so, there, we'll come yeah, back. It's we'll not. Yeah, it's not there. All right. All right. Not, while we're talking about engineers, should the board, uh, should, uh, wait, 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 wait. does the board wish to refer the application to the consult to a, a consulting engineer with respect to traffic issues? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes all around. Yeah, but I think, you know, I think. Eric made a good point. Uh, I don't know, you know, I don't want the town board to think that we're seeking, well, I don't, I don't know about the other board members, that we're seeking a brand new start from scratch uh, traffic study. I think it would be adequate to have uh, someone review the traffic study and bring it up to date. Well, that's what referring the application yeah, that's, that's to another professional really means. They're going to look at what's been submitted and review it for us. 
and make I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I don't think that's the intent. That's uh, does anybody have that idea as their intention? Mm -hmm. Board members? Well, my 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 intention would be for the applicant to update the traffic study as Eric proposed because I think the traffic study was a good one. Just could use some updates. And then we then hire somebody to look at those numbers right. and tell us what the best yeah. thing to do in terms of planning in, from the town's perspective right. to take care of traffic. That's right. So I, I think we're all, I think that that's, we we're all in the same place. No one's saying, yeah. you know, go, get out there with the counter and start all over again. No. So, all right. Um, okay. So next, so we have an additional question that Jody, we've thrown into the, you know, into the mix here. Uh, next, some information pertaining to generated noise from the generator and helicopters be submitted. And again, I don't think yes. anyone's going to say no to that. The generator, yes. I, I, I honestly think the helicopter thing is silly because I, I think it's irrelevant. There, really, it's not even clear how it'll how many times it'll land there. And yeah, but it's I, basically I exempt from noise impacts anyway. That's FAA stuff. We don't have any jurisdiction over that. Yeah, I presume if it's landing, it's essential, and that the noise is not the issue. Well, I think it, you're right, Kathy. Does anybody else have any feelings about that, about helicopter noise? No, I think you're right. I think it should just be generator. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody? I agree. All right, good. All right. Should details in the form of specifications be submitted for the generator? And I guess... Yeah. Uh, it sounds like they said they actually submitted that. Um, I, didn't, we did. I didn't see it, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. I it was in the package. It was. Okay. All right. Should a stage 1A and 1B archaeological report be provided? Yes. Do have, yeah. Well, do we have unanimity on that? I'm not sure if we do. But Tim, isn't, isn't that a, is that a uh, site plan or a CEQA? I guess it's both. Yeah, well, it's going to go to site plan. Does, they, does anyone oppose on uh, stage 1A and, and 1B archaeological reports? No. No one? No. no, I think we should. Yeah. Do. No, I'm, not I'm not opposed. Okay. All right. Okay. Should I ah, you see we were close? Should the traffic study be amended as noted above? There it is. So yes. we already yeah. we already talked about that. All right. Should the applicants address the issue of structures with a 50 foot buffer and provide for a 20 foot wide area for a future bike path? Yes. 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 yes all around. Okay. Is the board willing to amend the declaration establishing the 50 foot buffer? Mm, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm, I'm going to possibly on that one myself. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to see an alternate design that. Uh, I, I would too before I relinquished on that. Doesn't mm -hmm. It doesn't use the buffer for infrastructure. Yeah, I feel the same. Anybody? Anybody else want to comment on that? Well, can, we, can we say it that way? I mean, I, yeah, I, I do the same way. Absolutely. I, he uses it for the bike path. Uh, let me be clear about infrastructure, but not for drainage and, and waste. Right, right. I agree. Is everybody on board on that? Yeah. Oops. No, I, I, I actually think that with this particular plan and zone change site plan, that it makes sense to put drainage back there along with the bike path. So I, I don't think we need a redesign. I agree with Ian on that one. I agree with Ian on that also. I agree with Ian too. That's four of us. That's five. Yeah. Five? It was a five? Mm -hmm. uh, Sam, right. it, if Lou is... I thought I heard Ed say that. Uh, did I hear Ed say that? You did. I thought I did. And Lou? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I have a problem with the trees interfering with the, with the sanitary system. It, it's not going to work. I agree, I agree. Yeah. Those can be moved. Those can be moved very easily. So that's a very easy fix. You mean the trees? Yeah. That's not the issue, Lou. The issue is whether we allow them to put any sort of structures, meaning the drainage structures, in the buffer. In the easement. Well, I, yes. have, I have no problem putting the drainage structure in the buffer. The problem that I had, which I forget who it was that brought it up, might have been Eric, is that if you put those trees there, the root system is going to interfere with the sanitary uh Drainage. Yes. And the drainage. And the drainage. So, so my problem is not putting the drainage and the sanitary system there. My problem is putting the trees there. 
Well, it, okay. that's, but when we have an engineer look no. at that and make sure that that's done correctly, I mean, I, I don't think they're going to want to have root systems going into sanitation either. I think no. an engineer, if the engineer is looking at the drainage system, that would be, come up as one of the issues. Yeah. Well, look, my, here's my thought. I would rather have the sanitary system and drainage in that buffer area and not have the trees instead of having the trees there and then having to put the sanitary system uh, in where the uh, in in the uh, paved area which might cause other problems yeah i don't think it's an either or situation i think really it's just are we willing to override the you know 50 foot are we willing to change the terms of the easement you know, that's what we're being asked. Are we well, willing to do If the question awesome. is really just, are we willing to do, consider that? I mean, isn't that, that's kind of what we're being asked here, right? We're not, I think, no, we're, I think we're being to be asked commenting we'll on a do specific it. solution, right? We, we don't know yet. All, we should all read the easement, really. I, I think we should hold that answer. I don't think we're really well, well informed we're, enough we're, to make that determination at this point. Yeah, Underground is, infrastructure is often allowed in an easement like that. The town needs to do the secret thing, Thomas. Okay, I mean, I, I'm not sure if we even need to amend the declaration, but if we do, and we have five people now willing to say that they're willing to amend it, it changes the analysis and the discussion. But you know, from what I have here, Ian, Ed, Lou, Sharon, and Sam are willing to amend the declaration. So. I'm the call again. <laughs> and, and when I say I'm willing to amend the, the declaration, I'm not saying that I'm ready to amend it. I need yeah. to know more. Well, that's what. You, but you're being asked to to amend it. So I think that then what I, my proposal well, is you need more information decision, right? to know whether you're willing to amend it because you want to know what you're amending it to. Is it too soon to be asking this question? That's my feeling. The the problem okay. is it's not all right. It, if it's if the, your answer is it's too soon to ask that ask the question, then that's that is an answer. I just was trying to get an idea of where you guys fell with that because we're gonna have to have a discussion about it. You know, me and Liz and John about whether or not it applies, and so I, I think that's that's fine. So if the question is under the right circumstances, are we willing to amend? That's a kind of a different question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we don't right. know what the circumstances are. We I might don't. be willing to amend it if I knew what the circ. I don't. These yep. circumstances don't compel me, but yeah. others may. Well, that's Thomas, exactly right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can somebody circulate the the uh, easement so we can all see what it says? It's, it's attached, attached to the memo. It's attached to oh, the memo. Okay, thanks. It's right um, here. I just wanted to add something sorry, to. I didn't do my homework. <laughs> I just wanted to add something to the narrative which is um, to Randy's point about, um, you know, what, what other kinds of chemicals or medicines or, you know, um, byproducts of medical care may be uh, put into the septic system, you know, because we know that medical waste uh, is a different level of, um, uh, you know, waste product, and I would, I would like the narrative to address that and how that would be handled. Okay. Can do that. Thank you. Thank we, you. Let me, let me just. I got it. Well, I, I yeah. got to jump back to this business about the declaration because Thomas doesn't the town have to the town board has to deal with Seeker by the fifteenth, right? right? September fifteenth. Yeah. Right. So if we don't say something on it one way or the other, we're basically punting. To the town board on that particular issue, right? I mean, uh, I I don't know. I mean, it's it just this is an initial review. Can't we say? I'm sorry, Thomas. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's just okay. I'm not sure how much this declaration will conflict with Secra. I, I'm, you know, I think we just needed to know kind of where everyone fell with it or where they are with it, and I think we have an idea now. Um, I'm not even sure if the declaration applies necessarily mm -hmm. that we'll have to amend it, but yeah, it would be not, helpful to know if it did apply and it needed to be amended, then where the board is with it. Um, well, can we take that up at the next meeting if there's some better read on that? Because this is an initial review. I don't see how we can 
deal that's, with all of these questions definitively. Okay, that's a, that's an answer. So I mean, I think we've got an answer. Yeah, on that was, that, move on. I think we've good. got an answer. We've covered ninety, we've covered 90 percent of the issues, and if we uh, the next meeting, uh, it'll we have a meeting in two weeks, and then we have a meeting on the second of September. So uh, it should be sufficient I, time, right? Yeah. In favor of we're open to amending it, I think we're saying that with a good plan, we're open to it. That's it. Right. Yeah. 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 I think you're writing it. I think you're right. Right, the last question is, should the lighting plan be amended as noted above? And um, I, 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 that's yeah, I think they said they submitted that, but yeah, that they'll think, send us they cut sheets. That, so yeah. We're good. Sam, what about what about the, uh, the question about the public water supply well there? Do we want to get it's input there. from the water authority on that? It's probably a good idea. I don't have anything on the application that has already been sent to the uh, the water authority. I I've uh, had uh, emails with a representative, and um, I believe they're reviewing it now. Um, but they are an involved agency. We sent them a, a lead agency request, and um, they they are in the process of reviewing the application. They were notified as soon as it formally came in. All right. So I can. Eric, we, we, I want to move, guys. I, I want to move on to the next applicant. We have we have the two that we didn't do. It's nine ten. We'll we'll okay, get back yeah, to this next time. This, this is an important consideration of the site plan, and we we are not really participating in secret here. So no, I'd no. like to I'd like for us to get the correspondence from the water authority on their response to the project. I would I would expect that it, it will um, be provided shortly. So uh, we're okay. You circulated to the planning board members. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, and then we could take that up along with this one issue regarding the covenant at either our meeting in two weeks or a meeting in on the second. Yeah. So that's that's a good plan. Okay. Thank you. All right. Listen, thank applicant. You for your time and, and thank you. Area, go right ahead. Thank, thank you, everybody. Okay, bye, Liz. All right, thank bye. you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Okay. All right. Now we're on to, uh, we're going to take, uh, we have two that are back, uh, way back when we were going to do. Um, they were the Hellman Hangar and the uh, uh, Brooks Park. Was it Brooks? No, it's the Hellman. No, it was. Uh, it was. Look at my wrong piece of paper. Twin Forks. Twin Forks. Right. So, um, Let's do a helm and hanger. Hopefully, we can get through that one relatively quickly. Um, and uh, Joel, is Joel Halsey on the phone? I will. I see, I see in the chat here that Joel and Lori are on. This is uh, uh, Lori. You're gonna have Hello, to pull your jets through. This is Mike at LTV. Excuse me. Yes, I, I'm gonna be unmuting Joel right now for everybody. One moment. All right, ahead. Yay! And uh, Lori, we'll, we'll get to you next. All right, this, this is this is Joel. Okay. All right. Uh, just so you right. guys know, I had a heck of a I had a heck of a time getting to this meeting tonight. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. Yeah. You guys... Sooner or later, we'll all be back in the same room. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm doubting that. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your waiting till now. I know you were you were the you were supposed to be the lead off, and not quite at the end. But uh, all right, Marco, why don't you take us through this and. Uh, can uh, get going. Okay. Uh, an application has been submitted to construct a 50 foot by 50 foot or 2,500 square foot hangar with a 30 foot by 30 foot asphalt parking area and a 30 foot wide taxiway on a 10,553 square foot or 0.242 acre area leased from the town of East Hampton. The area leased is part of the town airport and zoned commercial industrial. The leased area previously held a hangar that was in a state of disrepair and removed. The size of the, the size of the proposed hangar is consistent with the sizes of other hangars on the adjoining lots. The hangar directly west is 40 foot by 40 foot, and the hangar to the west of that is 50 foot by 50 foot. The property will be screened by evergreen trees and will have a shielded motion-controlled lighting fixture mounted for the hangar. A public hearing was held electronically by video and teleconferencing, televised on local TV, LTV, Channel 22, and made available for live stream on the LTV website, ltveh.org, June 24, 2020. The public was not permitted. Sorry? Marco, nobody spoke, right, at the public hearing? 
Uh, I'm getting to it. Uh, the public was not permitted to appear in person, but could comment by telephone by calling 351-888-6331. A transcript of the hearing was posted to the town's website after the hearing, and the hearing was to remain open until July 29, 2020, for the purpose of receiving written comments. No member of the public spoke at the hearing, and no written letters have been submitted to the file to date. Comments from the fire marshal dated April 23, 2020, have found the submitted information sufficient and no further review necessary. Comments from the East Hampton Airport Director James L. Brundage have found no objections, but will prefer input from the Federal Aviation Administration before a final determination. In conclusion, provided the board agrees, the application is ready for approval. Uh, conditions of approval are approval from the Federal Aviation Administration, approval from the ARB, uh, and demonstration of compliance with the Planning Board's groundwater protection policy. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, does uh Joel, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I just have a quick question. I sent an email. And I had a call into Marco today. What kind of demo, how do we demonstrate compliance with the groundwater protection plan? Um, we did submit the um, that was on the plans, and we did submit the spec sheets for the the, the coding. So, what else do we need? I think I think it's um, you won't get your CO until an inspection indicates that the. Um, you know, the plans were executed as in, 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 con consistent with the special groundwater protection plan policy. Uh, I think the idea okay. was just well, have I'm a... Um, okay. I I one, one at a time, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the idea was that, um, you know, after everything was completed and there were um, uh, as-built uh, plans submitted to the building department um, for the final sign-off, that it, those plans would be... Um, signed and stamped by a licensed engineer, which um, they require anyway. So I think that covers it. Um, I don't oh, know yeah, what you're making sure. Go ahead, yeah. Joe. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's not going to delay the building permit process. No, no, it, it, okay. uh, he, it just means that F, you can't get your CO until you've demonstrated compliance. So you can go okay, ahead and fine. do it, but you know, the as built plans is what I it's what I said, and then Eric restated it. But once you send in your as built plans, it should indicate that the groundwater protection policy has been, you know, that the building is compatible with that. We're, we're, There's nothing extra perfect. for you to do at this well, moment. Guys, Joel. One at a time. I want Ed, it says application. So Ed, uh, well, hold, before you go, Ed, Joel, did you have anything else? Joel, uh, nope. Everything's else is fine. Everything's good. Uh, in that case, Ed, please take over. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, yeah, there's, I mean, Joel seems to understand there's nothing else he needs to do at this moment about about that. It's really just demonstrating during the process of getting a CO that it's been executed the way that it's been designed. I, I have nothing else to add to this. I think this has been kicking around for a long time. I think this is ready to go. Excellent. Does anyone have anything else they want to add? Uh, the question is, who, who reviewed the design for compliance with the groundwater protection standards, since we don't have an engineer? Well, I, I don't know if um, Joanne wants to chime in. I don't know if she, she can. Um, okay. Um, I think that the idea moving forward, based on the fact that we don't have a town engineer, is that... Um, the consulting engineer would only be used on, you know, larger scale projects where you really needed um, somebody to review um, substantial uh, figures and calculations. Um, this is a relatively small hangar building, so I think the idea moving forward on on applications like this was to have um, the the engineer, the applicant's engineer, um, make a notation or say that they're going to be in compliance with the uh, the policy and then put their stamp on the plan. And then um, their uh, you know, expertise as an engineer is the insurance that that's been met. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have that uh, avenue that we had in years past of having an in-house engineer to review the plans. Uh, Brandy, there were two, two standards that applied. One was that there were no floor drains, and there could be a notation on the plan saying no floor drains. Jo Joanne, you're really faint. You're very faint. I can hardly hear you. There were, there were two standards that applied. 
one, that there be no floor drains, and the second, that there be an epoxy put down, and those notations are on the plans. Right. So that there's a epoxy put down on the on the slab floor. It's a slab floor. Yes. It's a slab floor. There are two standards that apply to the application. One of them was that there be no floor drains, and the other that there be a certain type of epoxy. And both those things are noted on the plans. But they also there also has to be a lip uh, that you know it's it's, an, it's almost like a bathtub to prevent a spill. You have to have a lip on the floor in addition to the epoxy. We we haven't been doing that at, for, at the airport for for hangers, and we have yet to get the union to the hangar. Well, it's not it's not going to work if you don't have the lift. Well, you know, this is something we that this application has been on and on and on at least four times, five times, and 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 the, they have their engineer, they have their engineering report, and I don't know if this is something that we should be bringing up at this late date. I mean, this oh, it's a glitch in our review process. I think. Well, it may, it, but you know what? It, it, it's if it, this is first of all, Joe Andrew said this is how it's done at the airport. So if things are done differently at the airport than they are elsewhere, and I can understand why that would be the case. Then, well, the groundwater is just the groundwater is the most important in the town there. Yeah, I know that. I, if there's I, I anywhere, know if there's anywhere you're not going to be like uh, you know fluffy about it. It would be at the airport. Well, I don't know, man. You know, we, and then and then what? Say, we, Randy, are you saying we should? Are you saying we shouldn't say it's ready? I it's think ready. I think we have to have a more than a a floor drain and epoxy standard. That's not enough. And then we're going to have we're going to have that note on the plan. And then what? The building department supposed to come in after it's built and say. It meets it meets the standard. I don't know. I I just don't think it's a, I don't think it's effective. Well, if we've been but the question is, Joanne, th this is the way we've done it at the airport all along. Yes. And, and if this is what we've been doing at the airport all along, you know, I I don't think it's fair to the applicant to suddenly say, all right, now we're going to change the way we do things, especially now that we don't have an engineer that we had one before. And I I just don't think it's fair to the applicant at this point. I mean, you want to say that you don't think it's ready to be approved? That that's something else. But, well, you wait, know. Joanne, you're saying that the the pods building didn't have a lip on the. It doesn't have the the floor coming up at the at the edges. I'm saying that the other um, hangers at the. Oh. Room. Well. Yeah, I mean, Aunt Randy, I tend to agree with you in your assessment of what's effective, but it seems to me at this point, we've been using this as our groundwater protection policy. It may be flawed or not as comprehensive as it should be, given your suggestion, but I think it's what we've been using and uh, that Joanne is, is recommending what we've done with other hangers there. Well, you know, I agree with you that it's it seems in in incomplete in some way, but I don't know that at this point we can go back. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm it twice already. I don't think it's fair to the applicant at this point. I think that if this is an issue that that, that, that should have been raised and it should have been raised, you know, three months ago, it would have been raised by our in-house engineer. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. But meanwhile, uh, here, uh, it's possible that Tom's reviewed this. Frankly, I mean, it's been around for a while. I think it. Was, uh, I, I, I think I did. Gonna Tom speculate. Was... I'm not even going to speculate about what Tom might might have done or might not have. Done. I don't think that's fair either. I think that what we've got is a policy that Joanne's just told us is the way it's done at the airport. And if that's what's been done at the airport right along, then that's what's been done at the airport. You want to change it after this going forward, as long as we have another application for another hangar. I don't think we do. Uh, you know, in, in opera right now, fine, we can change it. We can we can amend our groundwater policy. But as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm prepared 
to, to say the application is ready for approval based on everything that's gone on already. So uh, I'd like to move the question. Um, is the application ready for approval? Is anyone? Yes. yes. Three or four, yes? Yes. Luke, Ian, you're, 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 you're muted. I'm gonna vote against it. That's fine, that's a Randy, that's your right. I'm not yes. saying you, you shouldn't. Ian, that's a yes? I'm a yes. Uh, uh, Lou, that's a, I'm sorry, Lou, you're muted. Lou, unmute yourself. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Kathy? I'm gonna abstain. Abstain. Okay. Yeah. So, and and uh, and you were you were uh, I take it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you have five yeses, one no, one abstain. Right. I mean, I'm. You know, on that. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. So, last one on the site plan review. And again, uh, Laurie. So, I, oh, um, Joel. Thank you very much for sticking around again. Thank you, guys. Good night. Have you a good too, night. Joe. Bye, Joel. Okay. Uh, twin Forks mini storage. Um, okay. Eric, it's yours. And uh, Lori, are you with us? Oh, Lori? dear. I'm here. Oh, all right. I'm here. <laughs> all right. I've been wait, here wait, since wait. 6.30. Sorry. Something again. didn't work. You know what happened. Wait. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Eric, go ahead, please. Take yeah, it. this is an application to modify the previous approval. Uh, for Twin Forks mini storage. Um, there was a recent modification to um, change the plans to reflect those that the uh, County Health Department is gonna require um, the sanitary calculations. Uh, this modification request is to modify the approval by phasing the project, uh, putting it in two phases. Uh, phase one would be um, beginning construction on the mini storage building, um, which does not require health department approval. Uh, phase two would be um, completed after health department approval is granted. I will include the uh, remainder of the site improvements. Um, basically, they wanna be able to get a building permit to begin work on a mini storage facility, which does not trigger the um, health department approval, which they have uh, yet obtained. Um, we have no objection to this. Um, the CL wouldn't be granted until both phases were completed. Um, and we do note though, there was a condition that project limiting fencing be installed um, before um, the building permit um, as the project is approved now, not in phases. Um, we would recommend that that still be a, a, a condition for the building permit for phase one, um, just to make sure that that's in place. Uh, so again, we have no objection to this. Uh, the board should determine if you agree. Very good, thank you. Laurie, uh, Ms. Wiltshire, you have anything you wanna add? Well, yes, I wanna explain why we're asking for this modification. Um, so the health department has basically approved all of the sanitary and water Supply situations to the entire site, including LTV, the existing building, and the mini storage has no waste or water associated with it. We cannot finish our health department approval, and this is dating back to 1992, when Frazier built a mezzanine in LTV building with the approval of the town building department and got a CO without obtaining health department approval. So. We are uh, trying to finish that 1992 approval. Um, the problem is everything's been approved by the health department except that because county center is shut down, we've not been able to process any legal documents. So basically, uh, LTD paid off their mortgage and that needs to show up on the title report. Otherwise, we have to get mortgage consent from the bank the bank will not give us consent because they're no longer involved. We did just finally get the mortgage satisfaction recorded at the county, but we still need the title work done to be able to file the covenants. That's the last stage or step of the health department approval. So we are kind of stuck in a COVID situation right now because there's no access to county center. And in order to, and also my client, uh, Chris Denon, his company, Twin Forks Moving and Storage, is just inundated right now with um, people moving out from the city and wanting to move all their stuff with them and store it. And he's running out of storage places. So he really would like to get this mini storage building up and running as soon as possible. So if we can just get this building permit, that can start. Then as soon as we can get through the, the county center, to get our, our covenants recorded, we should finish that health department approval and be able to do phase two. So it's just a matter of trying to get this building up at this time. 
Thank you very much. Randy, this is yours. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm actually recusing this application. I'm sorry I didn't speak up earlier. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ian. Randy, you're muted and you should unmute your day. Go right ahead. Um, I don't really have anything to add. I think uh, Eric and Lori, I, I don't have any objection to this phasing. Okay. Well, I don't okay. think there's any, there's not really anything new as far as the site plan goes. It's just phased construction. Uh, Thomas, do we need to do it in that case? Well, does anyone have any objection uh, no. to, to the no. modification? All right, Thomas, do we need a, do we need a resolution on this? Um, Eric, how, how do we typically do this? I, I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll need a uh, modification resolution. Well, okay. yeah, but the planning board has to agree. It's like anything else. We would yeah. agree to it, and then we'd make the, you know, we'd well, need I mean, a resolution. We, so, so yes. you don't need to vote or anything right now. No, no, that would be a resolution for the next week. I think if yeah, people agree, yeah. Okay, all right. So next week, or well, two weeks, presumably, we'll have a resolution for the applicant uh, granting the requested modification because I didn't hear any objection and uh, one abstention, so, all right. Well, oh. recusal, Terrific. right? Not that. an well, abstention, I'm, he's I recused. Say, thank you, thank you. I didn't mean to say yes. abstention, I meant to say recusal. Yeah. All right, Ian, you can, you can come back from the ether. <laughs> Rejoin us, <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. That was fast. All right, listen, everybody, thank you all again. We have um, two matters on for uh, Lori, thank you again. We're sorry we held you up as long as we did. Appreciate you sticking that was around. Thank well, you. Did yes. get something out of it. Good night. Thanks, yeah, Lori. Good night. <laughs> okay, good. 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 Good night. All right. Um, all right. We have two matters on uh, on uh, site plan uh, for the regular meeting. The first one is throwing. I'm going to um, just you know disappear for a minute, Kathy. You're on this. Oh, right. I'm, okay. I'm and I don't have the, uh, uh, well, I think we're, I'm just going to ask Ed to read the resolution yeah. of approval for the site plan. Right? right. Ed, this is your application. If you would do that, please, and we'll take sure. a vote. Yep. Uh, in the matter of the application of Freund uh, minor site plan approval, 291 Springs Fireplace Road site plan, I've read the resolution and call for its adoption. We have a second. Someone needs to second the I'm motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, op any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we have six in favor, one recusal. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, thank you the, to the one stop folks. And off we go. Sam, you're back. Indeed. Okay, so, and the last one on our agenda tonight is 180. SB LLC. Lou, this is yours. Okay, I, I've got a question. I, I read it and it says that the conditions of approval uh, are such that uh, the, the approved site plan that it cites in this approval under the conditions of approval or is the site plan dated January 8, 2020. Now, uh, in the, the information, uh, and I, I address this to Bia, maybe she can answer this question. I just want to make sure that we've got this right, because the information that I had was that the May 11, 2020 uh, map, which is later than this site plan, showed that the clearing uh, was going to be reduced to 112,350 square feet. And we had determined at the, uh, when we uh, reviewed this application, if you all recall, we went through this whole discussion about the clearing <clears throat> and we settled, we all agreed that it should be at the, uh, the clearing should be no less than the, or no more than the 110,715 square feet, which is where uh, uh, it, it was indicated on the January 9, 2019 uh, survey. So I just want to make sure 
having said all that, I just want to make sure that the plan that is being referenced in this approval shows that it's 110,715 square feet uh, as the maximum clearing. Fabia, do you know? Yes, uh, so we are approving this minor site plan for archaeological excavation only. Um, for that reason, the, the site plan depicts the excavated area and the clearing would is not a part we are not uh, considering clearing for this minor site plan approval. Okay, so does that mean that that the whole clearing issue just fades away into the ether and we mm -hmm. never report it again? Mm -hmm. um, maybe Thomas, Thomas can address that. Uh, Thomas, why don't you uh, pick up on that? Well, first, the, the applicant asked and the board agreed to bifurcate the approval and the amendment of the covenant. So that's something the board decided to do. And the applicant is submitting their reveg. I actually talked to Alice Cooley about this recently and they're submitting their revegetation plan um, this week. So we should be able to get that hearing scheduled and get you know that part of it done pretty quick, but- um, okay. As long as it's as long as it's not just being overlooked and not being attended to. Yeah, I okay, promise you it's it's not. Okay, all right, great. Thank so, you so much. Uh, with regards, so I'll just read this um, this approval uh, in the matter of the application of 180 SVLLC minor site plan, Suffolk County tax map number 300 dash 74 dash 5 dash 30.5 i've read the uh minor site plan approval and i concur that it should be uh approved is there a second second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions passed and carried seven nothing thank you lou Okay, folks, it is now 9.36 p.m. Again, our thanks to LTV and the good people there, Jason and Mike. Our thanks to the legal department. Thank you to Thomas and company. Thank you to staff, Jody and company, and Joanne and Eric and Marco and Fabia. And uh, <laughs> thank you, board members. Again, uh, one day, as I, I was very serious before, I really am looking forward to the day that we can all do this under one roof where we're all sitting there and... Uh, tossing the ball around ourselves. And thank and you, however. Thank you, Sam, for for chairing us all. Well, yes, you thanks, know, Sam. That's that's uh, my great joy, if you want to know the truth. So thank you. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, ca the calendar of the law says two weeks from now. Uh, that's, uh, what, uh, August 19th? Yes. All right, so we're, I will see you all folks back on August 19th. OK. Don't forget, don't forget to make sure you look uh, whatever it was we were talking about that was going to be in the minutes uh, in, the, in the agenda so that we could have our comments in. I don't remember which one it was, but Thanks, Scott. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, anyway, it doesn't matter. Can I get a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion, oh, to, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. we're done. Thank you very Bye, much. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.